Good Friday night, everybody. Welcome to Trailer Stadium in beautiful Rosenberg, Texas. This is VibeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend County High School Sports. It is week nine of the football season, and tonight we have the Fulcher Chargers going through their senior night, taking on the George Ranch Longhorns. The first time that Fulcher and George Ranch have ever met in varsity competition on the football field. I'm Roger Smith. Glad to have you with us. And you can tell there's a lot of enthusiasm. They've introduced 38 senior football players, and now they're they're introducing dance team members and cheerleaders and everybody who is a senior who performs at football games to represent Fulcher High School. Glad to have you with us. I think I already said that, but I never want to take it for granted. And we have a historic battle between these two teams from Lamar Consolidated ISD. And Fulcher maybe is in the midst of a historic season. They have started off 8-0, and they're looking pretty good. And the George Ranch Longhorns are a team that has won a state championship back in 2015 when this year's seniors were about 8 years old. So they won that state championship, and a few years prior to that, Lamar consolidated with Jaquez Rogers and his fabulous teammates won a state championship for Lamar Consolidated ISD in the great sport of football. And so, will Fulcher be able to catch lightning in a bottle? The young school with lots of great numbers, immense talent, and a coach who can really pull things together with innovative play calling and setting a culture for the team? We shall see. But this game is very important to Fulcher. They just want to keep the train rolling. So we're going to bring you the countdown to kickoff show. We'll have interviews with both head coaches. And Casey Vogt is the new head coach in his first year leading the George Ranch program. And he took over for Nick Cavallo. Cavallo having moved on to Morton Ranch in Katy ISD. Our coverage is brought to you by Xfinity. First Tire and Automotive. Love Houston Volleyball. LOVB.com and the official banner provider of VibeFortBend.com, Leonetti Graphics. We'll be right back and visit with Casey Vogt on VibeFortBend.com when we return. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. Introducing Love Houston, professional volleyball like you've never seen it before. You saw them win silver in Paris this summer. Now you can see them playing for the first time on American soil. Love Houston will feature some of the best pro players in the world, including two-time Olympic medalists Jordan Thompson and Micah Hancock. Get ready for first serve in January 2025. Visit lovb.com for tickets. Volleyball is the next major league. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. 
We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Lean Eddy Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty mm -hmm. items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lean Eddy Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lean Eddy Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Good Friday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Countdown to Kickoff show. We're at Trailer Stadium. Another warm night, and it's time for George Ranch and Fulcher to play each other in a district game for the first time. And Casey Vogt is the head coach of the Longhorns. And have you thought about the significance of this being a first-time thing? We, we, we talked a little bit, uh, you know, as a team, again, the, uh, you know, our kids as seniors, they played this group from Lehman, our, our Reading Junior High, played Lehman Junior High in the eighth grade uh, Lamar Consolidated uh, football championship game. And so, again, I, I told our team today, I said, you've seen this team before. You've played them before. So, again, they're really excited to get, get a chance to play them uh, here at, at Trailer Stadium. So they, they have a history, just not wearing the purple of Fulcher and the maroon of George Ranch. Yeah, that's correct. They were both at our feeder schools. Uh, Redding Junior High feeds into to, uh, George Ranch, and then Lehman Lee feeds into Fulcher. And so, uh, again, that um, again we're, you know, we're about 40 minutes apart, but a lot of these kids have grown up around each other. They know each other. And so, it's, it's again, it's going to be a little bit personal. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad that you said Reading because when I travel the road that leads me to Trailer Stadium, um, I wasn't sure how to say it, and now I know. Thank you. There, there you go. It's, it's right, right, right there, right off the, the main road, so it's right there for us. All right, so describe what your team is going to have to do in order to get the win tonight. Fulcher is state-ranked and everything, but I know rankings don't mean everything and don't mean anything to your guys, but what do you have to do successfully to come out on top tonight. Well, I think the biggest thing is, is, is it, to be in a game with a really good opponent. You, you have to play with, with very, very few or no mistakes. And so again, we've talked all week long about again the the process we go through each week is again trying to limit mistakes. And so um, again, we do still have a relatively young team, but again, it, it's guys that we're now uh, week eight of the season uh, is, is no longer a new team. And so uh, we really got to do a great job limiting mistakes. By the way, I'm enjoying visiting with you now. It's the first time that I've interviewed you as the head coach of the Longhorns. So how did you get here, Coach Casey Vogt? Um, believe it or not, I, I was a college coach uh, for, for 20 years. Um, and then we took a, a, a move in the state of Georgia and we became a high school coach in Georgia. Uh, really liked it, but we had no ties, uh, family ties in the state of Georgia. My wife is is uh, a Quero native, so straight down 59. And uh, we made a decision a year ago uh, to, to move back home. And, uh, you know, Brian Randall hired me at Randall High School last year as his offensive line coach. And it was a really great opportunity to, to get in in state and, and uh, get, get close to home and close to family. And then uh, this job opened up, uh, the George Ranch job opened up, uh, I guess it was February uh, when, when we started talking about the interview process. And, and here we are. So again, very fortunate to be in a great program like George Ranch. All right. And the fact that your wife being from Quero is one of the big reasons that you are here. Uh, it's such a small world. I'll bet if I drop the name Diana Diaz on your wife, she might know whom she is because she's a teaching colleague of mine. And if your wife is anything like Diana Diaz, she is gold. And you have outkicked your coverage and made a great choice. A hundred percent. My wife is awesome. Uh, you know, she's the, the rock for our family. Again, I, I've got a son, Parker, who's out here uh, playing ball right now. Uh, he's a ninth grader. Uh, and then I've got a, a, a young daughter, Stella, that's 10. And, but my wife is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, is passionate about what I do and, and supports me. Uh, 
Um, you know, again, a lot of times people think the coaching part is just showing up on Friday nights, and there's so much more involved in coaching them and preparing a team. You know, again, you know, we have 240 plus athletes in our football program, and trying to have that many kids, you know, fed and coached and, and pushed to, to the and motivated to, to do the best they can is, is, is more than just a nine to five job, obviously. And so, but my wife is awesome. All right, and finally, one thing, it's it might throw me off a bit. So Fulcher is the home team tonight, but they're wearing white. You rarely see that as a, at a high school game. So I guess George Ranch is going to wear the dark jerseys, but be the visitors. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, you know, Coach Canduti, the, the, uh, um, their school wanted to do a whiteout um, uh, for their school, for their senior night is what they, their kids had requested. And, and, and you know, uh, that jersey color doesn't bother me one bit at all. So I, I didn't have a problem at all, uh, you know, letting them uh, recognize their seniors that way. So, so we went with our blacks tonight. All right, Coach Voden, it helps me as a broadcaster for them to be contrasting colors. Without if they weren't, I don't know what I would do. Exactly. Thanks for visiting with us and looking forward to future visits as well. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. And again, look forward to those, those visits as well. So. All right. That is Casey Vote, head coach of the George Ranch Longhorns, who will be wearing their black jerseys tonight, I presume, although they, they might be maroon. Not really sure. All right. We're going to get going, kick this thing off at 7 o'clock. But first, we'll talk with Nick Caduti, head coach of the Fulcher Chargers, ranked number 11 in the state, undefeated. And I'm not going to ask him about the things that I see on the little uh, lower back plates that the, the players wear, but they have a few messages for George Ranch. All right, we'll be right back on VibeFortMan.com. This is... Week nine of the 11 week football season. It's hard to believe so much has gone by, but Fulcher is still undefeated, looking to stay that way. We'll be back. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAuto.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit LOVB.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show. It is senior night for Fulcher and the theme is Whiteout. Coach Nick Caduti, this I've seen a lot of different senior night themes, and this is a little bit unusual. How'd you come up with it? Penn State, right? Uh, Pennsylvania guy, Penn State wide out. The whole introduction, the whole entrance will be actually them. So, plus it's just kind of it's that whole team mentality of, you know, there's nothing on nothing on it, just the purple stripe that they've earned through the year, and the, and the name Fulcher. That's it. That's all there is. You know, um, I should have just. I should have noticed the, the Penn State similarity, but I, that somehow escaped me. I, it's been a long day, actually. Okay, so uh, Coach Caduti, I know that George Ranch and Fulcher have never played each other in a district game. Have they ever played each other in a varsity game? No, uh, not in football. In fact, this is the first time uh, we really played each other. Uh, it's the first time a as a district opponent play each other. And, um, you know, it's kind of those things. You know, how do you handle this? How do you handle that diversity of this is the former, you know, head honcho, head top of the district. And, you know, we are now we are now the one on the other side. And the first time we were playing them, just like we did at Foster two years ago. So it's kind of exciting. That's why you kind of bring the whole identity, the whole wide out. You know, maybe you make this a thing. I think it's also a good thing to tie it to Lamar Consolidated because... The George Ranch Longhorns, very early in their school's history, became state champions, and I know that's something that your team aspires to do. Does that is that something that ever comes up when you're talking to your team? 
Yeah, and it happened so long ago that I think a lot of our kids don't really realize that they'd want to stay titled. But for the most part, yeah, it's, you know, they were on top of the game. They were on top of the world. They were, you know, these guys were, George Ranch was the, was the pinnacle. And so I would like for our kids to be able to get to that point and that pinnacle. And, you know, for us, it's, a, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, it's not about anything other than just being ourselves and maybe just maybe getting one of those state titles like George Ranch. Well, I'd love to see it. And I intend to see it in person when it happens. And let's see. Uh, all of a sudden, I was thinking about the next question, and I then I started listening to your answer. Okay, so let me talk about Ryland Forks. I was looking at his passing numbers for the year. 125 point something quarterback rating, and he's only thrown five interceptions, and he threw three in the first game. He's been doing a great job protecting the football, doing nothing to get you beat. And he's got a pretty good touchdown pass total now. How would you uh, grade his development? You know, coming from a kid who honestly, you know, you're a sophomore when you play quarterback four in the first game he plays Parolin and goes out and throws, uh, you know, three interceptions. <laughs> it's kind of rough, right? It's, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where he had to overcome that pressure and the peer pressure that happens with, you know, Honestly, it's hard. You know, you're a sophomore quarterback. People think that they can be, you know, someone might be better, and you come out and you know you prove them wrong, and you 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 go through the whole thing, and you are a what's the word I'm looking for? Resilient. Mm -hmm. And you know, for him to come out, I, I believe he might be number one in the district in passing right now, um, maybe number two. But for a kid who never played quarterback, who's played receiver his whole life, you know, I couldn't be more proud of a kid. Uh, resilient. The seniors have taken to him, and he's uh, right now he's the leader of this football team. All right. Well, I hope he leads them a long, long way, Coach, and uh, I'll follow. Amen, brother. 16 games. You know the real. All right. That is Nick Caduti, head coach of the Fulcher Chargers, trying to stay unbeaten and basically salt away their district championship as they take on George Ranch here at Trailer Stadium. Our coverage is brought to you tonight by Xfinity, home of the 10G Next Generation Network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now by First Tyrant Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations, and they're all open Monday through Saturday. Every single first down tonight will be brought to you by First Tire and Automotive. By Love Houston. It is the new professional volleyball league sweeping the nation. They start in January. Houston has its own team, and its team will be headquartered right here in Fort Bend County. They'll play their home matches at the Fort Bend Epicenter. That is Love Houston, or you can go to LOVB, which stands for League One Volleyball.com. LOVB.com. And you can find out how you can get tickets, how to get involved. It's going to be great professional volleyball at the Fort Bend Epicenter. We welcome them as a new sponsor. And we're also brought to you by Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider of VikeFortBend.com. Fulcher against George Ranch. It's Friday night. No school tomorrow. What a relief. We'll be right back on VikeFortBend.com. Xfinity here, how can we help? Hi, um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online. Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are gonna need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Auto.
Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire Automotive Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAuto.com. That is the full show band under the direction of Andrew Lee, and we're about ready to get this one going. Roger Smith along with Patrick Kinnick. Welcome in, Patrick, and you've been asking me a few questions about Fulcher. We're going to see some things from Fulcher tonight that we haven't seen. Have you ever seen a team run the single wing? Wow. Um, probably maybe just on, on film, maybe. Um, I like that. I, I do like... Their offensive approach, definitely. I like their tight formations, and and you're going to see something new tonight, I guess. You're, so that's going to be kind of cool to watch. You know, most of the time they run the straight T formation right, with right. three running backs behind quarterback Rylan Forks, and they're going to do some of that tonight. But Zane Smith is going to take about half the snaps at quarterback. I'll be darned. And there's also another change, Patrick Broadway. You know, he's the best running back that Fulcher has, but because he was ejected last week, he's not going to play in the first half of this game. I didn't know that, that that he was ejected last week. That's news to me. It is senior night. 38 seniors who are on the football team and many more who are in other organizations. You're not going to have a... Honored I'm, prior to the game. I'm not... Sorry to bother, uh, interrupt you there, but you're not going to have a hard time uh, describing the Fulcher uniforms tonight, Roger. The full shoot. Oh, he's he's intent on seeing who won the toss, and I should have been more attentive to that. Sorry, Roger. Tony Barcelona is our referee. He said that George Ranch won the toss, but they deferred, so Fulcher will get the football first at the West End. And yes, indeed, I'm very happy to see Fulcher wearing the white uniforms with the deep purple numbers and George Ranch. While their primary color is maroon, their primary color of their uniforms tonight is black, black pants, black jerseys with not, uh, white number uh, numerals. <laughs> what am I doing? It's been a long day. With white numbers outlined in maroon and the black helmets. It's not going to be difficult for each team to figure out who's on their team. In the last time we saw Fulcher, they had lightning bolts on either side of their helmet, yeah. like the Los Angeles Chargers, but tonight... They have helmets that look like Penn State. They look like Penn State, uh, except it's purple instead of that dark blue color. And uh, you, I think you mentioned it's whiteout. They have a whiteout tonight. They went so far to the whiteout that their um, their sign that they ran through tonight was white. Nothing on it. That's right. I thought that was pretty clever. Mike Brown and David Omanor back to receive the opening kickoff from Ian Grisby. Fired up fans at Fulcher for their team that comes into this game 8-0 and ranked number 11 in the state. And it is Mike Brown from the two-yard line. Moves up the numbers on the far side, straight ahead, across the 30, still going and gets to the 35. You don't see a kickoff return no. where there's practically no change in direction very often. Looked like uh, Aiden Creech was in there on the tackle, among others, for George Ranch. But yeah, I was just going to comment, Roger. I like that. He just he just got the ball around the five or inside the five. He just took it right up the right up the seam on the right hash. I don't think he deviated a bit. And is this the uh, formation you're referring well, to? This right is not now? the formation, but it is Zane Smith at quarterback, the young man who has not had his hair cut since he was in second grade is under center, and it's Demarius Fro behind him. The H-back is Creighton Dickey. Two tight ends. Give to Fro over the right side. Breaks one tackle and squeezes out a three-yard gain. Grabbing him by the ankles. Cade Marino brought him down. It'll be second and seven. I tell you what, one of the fellas, uh, I think it's Mason Rank, he, uh, he was in the backfield quick, and he almost made the tackle for loss, but uh, Fro was able to get past him and avoid that loss. If Hank Stram had been the coach, he would say there was too much leakage on that play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta love Hank Stram. New line of scrimmage is the 38. Play clock is at eight. And now Zane Smith under center. 
Turns around, runs the option to the right, keeps it, turns it up, and fights forward and picks up six of the seven yards that he needed. It'll be third down and one as he advanced it to the 44-yard line. And we'll see how long this George Ranch defensive line, the defensive front, can really stand up to that just brutal pressure. What Fulcher does to their opponents is bludgeon them. Yes. Play in and play out. Zane Smith turns around, says a little something to Demarius Fro. Third and one, here we go. Toss sweep coming this way, Fro looking down the field, turns the corner, gets across the 50, the 40, and rushed out of bounds. It'll be a first down. Cade Marino ran him out. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. That was a pitch to the left there. He had a lead blocker. Aaron Houston and you know who another another blocker on that play was Zane Smith Zane Smith he, he led, likes to do that yeah, he, he pitched it and he got out in front and he helped to uh, lead the way 17 yard pickup to the 39 yard line of George Ranch and now we're in a spread formation there's a inside handoff as the quarterback is the guy we're used to seeing Ryland Forks the sophomore and he handed it off straight up the middle to Demarius Fro, and he picked up three. Timeout. Somebody sure. called a timeout. Full sure. All right, since uh, it's so early in the game, Patrick, let's just keep it right here. One of the things that Fulcher has going for them is they don't get their open date until week 11. They will play 10 straight weeks. This is the ninth straight week that they have played. And then they'll be off on the final week of the season where they can install new things to surprise playoff opponents. I think that's a, do you think that's a, an advantage or could that be a disadvantage? I think it's an advantage when you consider Coach Caduti and his staff. They're very innovative and they don't take that attitude of well we're just going to dance with who brung us they like to do new fresh stuff all the time so that the opponents are kept guessing not a bad strategy and it all works. right so zane smith is still on the field but he's not taking snaps he's lined up between uh, or right behind the tight end and the tackle on the left side and there goes a run up the middle very short run. They handed it to, hold on a second, 21. Yeah. That's uh, Mr. Bean, Caden Bean. Yeah, new runner on that play, and he able to pick up a couple, but it's third and about five to see if George Ranch can do something here. And of course, unless it's a disastrous play here, I would imagine Fulcher's going to go for it on fourth down if they don't get it here. Now we might see Forks throw the football. He's a 67% passer. For the year, his quarterback rating 126.5. Not bad at all. But he hands it off on third and five, and they only get two of the five that they needed. They handed it off inside. That was David Godley. I believe he's the younger brother of the great Davion Godley. Dominic Solis was in there on the tackle. A couple of other guys were in there as well, but pick number 99. And it's going to be a fourth down at about four, and as expected, Fulcher will go for it. They almost never punt. They've been so good this year that they usually don't need to, but even when other teams would punt, they go for it. Here goes Froze, stretching it out, gets a big hole inside the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, fighting for the end zone, and he's in for the touchdown. A 33-yard touchdown run on fourth and four, and Fulcher breaks out on top. I guess that's why you go for it. <laughs> uh, he had a huge hole there. Left, uh, right side of that line really developed a nice alley for him. And Fulcher on top early here, and uh, that's a classic Fulcher drive. Uh, don't, they didn't throw the ball once, did they? They certainly did not. And they're going to go for it, but they go with a formation that is heavy to the left. I think got five receivers all over on the left, and Forks throws it to Fro, hit in the backfield, gets away, keeps pushing, driving, but he comes up short. 
the two-point play, uh, two-point play does not work out. That was Andre Richardson with a great stonewall tackle right at the end. All right, six to nothing, 8.22 to go in the first quarter. Fulster on top of George Ranch. Xfinity here, how can we help? Hi, um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online. Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are gonna need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. Bullshire with an onside kick, and George Ranch, I believe, recovers it at their own 47-yard line. There was one guy who bounced us. He pounced on it, and it kind of slid out from under him like a bar of soap. But in the end, Baylor Smith made the recovery, and the Longhorns have good field position at their own 48. So how much do opponents work on the onside kick when they're preparing for Bullshire? You almost have to put time in every day to prepare for that. All right, Fulcher's defense has been incredible this year. Logan Hudson, 6.3 tackles per game and nine tackles for loss on the season. Evan Ferns right behind 6.1 tackles per game and Caleb Augustus, 15 tackles for loss. The first play is a straight ahead handoff and it doesn't get very much. It's Hayden Drinkard. Hayden and Desmond are the two Drinkard brothers, and there's going to be not just this season, but at least one more season with the Drinkards having a great impact on George Ranch football. It's just a one-yard gain on that first play. Well, you got to give him credit, though, to get the one yard. He was uh, knocked in the backfield a couple of yards back, and he somehow fought for the one yard at least. And they're huddling and looking for the play off of the sideline. George Ranch would certainly like to shorten this game. Absolutely. Fulcher really likes to pound you with the uh, the ground game. Nothing, nothing, uh, you know, finesse about what they do. Quick pass into the left flat, and the ball is knocked away. Incomplete for Fulcher. It was David Obenor who kind of read it like uh, one of those uh, the the most basic of children's primers. <laughs> And yeah, it was a little, broke it up. It was a little dangerous over there. It looked like the, a deflection might have gotten into the hands of the Fulcher defender, but it fell, fell to the ground. Third and nine, not where they want to be, but let's see what they can come up with here. Quarterback Hagen Leinberger in the spread formation, but we get flags, and that's because Hayden Drinker, to his right, stepped forward, and Hayden is talking to Leinberger as if Lineberger messed up, but I'll tell you what, Hayden Drinkard was the only one that moved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then about eight fingers pointed toward the, the motion, and then five flags flew on that. That was pretty obvious there. So now it's third down and 14. Logan Hudson is the leading interceptor on this full shirt team with three. Lineberger calls for the snap, drops straight back. Here comes the rush, throws over the middle, and it's incompleted. Broken up. Brian Hooven is grooving because he tipped it away from the intended receiver. That was Avery Luna. Correction. Desmond Drinker. Yeah, he was looking for a flag, but there's no way there was a flag on that. That ball was overthrown a bit. And... Uh, Slight contact, but certainly no no penalty on that. All right, Mike Brown is back just inside his 20 to receive the punt. 
And the punt is away from Avery Luna. Mike Brown has it at the 20. Up to numbers on the near side. Gets across the 45 and hit hard at the 47. Nice open field tackle. You want to see your guys hitting hard. And Nathan Mangus hit Brown hard. But I will say, Brown did not go down. Uh, right. <laughs> but did you, you notice he received that ball somewhere around the 20? And he went to the left, and there was nobody there. I mean, it was just a. I could have. I could. I think I could have jogged a, a few yards on that one. How it much was, room there was? It was a 36-yard punt with a 27-yard return. Yeah, they had it set up very well. 47-yard line, second possession. They're in good shape here. So Ryland Forks, quarterbacking Fulcher. They're going from right to left. That is from west to east in this first quarter. They have it on the near hash at their own 47 and the single setback is Demarius Fro. Hand off to Fro, bounces out to the right and he only gets a yard or two. George Ranch, their defensive front, reading it well and getting up last and usually that means you're the tackler, Cade Marino with his second tackle of the game. It's second down and nine. He did a good job there. He filled the hole nicely, got him low and I, I noticed on their roster, they have these these uh, categories. I'll give you categories here in a second after this play. And I thought about you today when I looked at this roster and saw that they give the last name first, <laughs> which is so unnecessary. Yeah. Second down and nine. There goes Fro on the stretch, play to the right. Gets outside the numbers, turns it up now. Inside the 30, all the way down to the 29 yard line. Well, and perhaps a touchdown saving tackle a penalty marker that came in late. Roger, I don't know if there was something that happened down there after that play. That play looked exactly like the play that they scored a touchdown on. Same type of uh, action there to the right. Nice wide open hole. And he got a good yardage on it. Looks like the Fulcher though is backing up. I'm not sure. Let's, let's hear if we can see what we got from Bar Tony Barcelona here. That's the freshman. Yeah, Mike Brown, he's got to make sure he doesn't do that again or he'll miss the first half next week like Patrick Broadway is for getting two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Yeah, you hate to see that happen, but I don't, I don't know what happened, but it was after the play, so they got a good gain on it, and then they had to bring it back all the way to the 45. Colton Marino made what would have been a touchdown saving tackle, and I wonder if we would have gotten unsportsmanlike conduct after the play had it been a touchdown. Yeah. Wow, he's really deep in the backfield. Eight and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage, and there is the run to the left. It is Mike Brown carrying inside the 40 to the 38, and tumbling out of there after making the tackle is Caleb Fontenot. So that's a pickup of seven. It's gonna be second down in a short three. Yeah, they're uh, they're plowing open some pretty good holes in there. And uh, we're gonna have to mention some of these linemen here. I'm gonna to try to get them for you. You are a friend of the linemen. Well, I am because I was a back and I appreciated all the work they did. Those stalwart silent sentinels. <laughs> And a fake to Mike Brown, dropping back his forks, throws it deep, and it is an incomplete pass, but a flag comes in. The intended receiver was Braden Kennedy, and a defender who was badly beaten just ran right through him, and that is a justified pass interference call. Yeah, it definitely was, and it's one of those things when you're going that fast, you're just trying to get there, and, and, you know, and when you're watching it from up here, you think, if he would just turn around, he could intercept that ball. But that's easier said than done because you're going, you know, you're full speed and you're beaten and all that kind of stuff. And that ball was definitely underthrown. I think the wind had a little bit to do with that. But, boy, the receiver was wide open. And, and he, the wind affected it because it was right. blowing somewhat in Ryland right. Fork's face and he heaved it but he couldn't get it there. I'll tell you what, yeah, I don't think it's quite as strong of a win tonight as it was last night. Do you think it's a little less perhaps? A tonight? little bit less, yeah. certainly. It's just a little less, but it is first down for him at the 25 yard line. Zane Smith is back under center, center and uh, Ryland Forks has gone to the bench. Caden Bean is the single setback. 
And they option it to the right. Zane Smith keeps it, gets inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! The hammer of four strikes again, and it's a touchdown from the 24, and Fulcher is up by, by a score of 12 to nothing. You know, when they go for two, sometimes miss it, sometimes make it. You really have to be careful about getting the score. So they're out there prepared to go for two. Forks with three running backs behind him. Now they move out of that formation. Heavy to the left, and now Zane Smith moves under center. Takes the snap, throws it to Ryland Forks, who throws it back to Zane. He got it! Not quite the Philly special, but similar. Yeah, a great play. That makes it 14 to nothing. And Fulcher has already imposed its will on the George Ranch Longhorns. 5.24 to go in the first. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. All right, I know to keep the commercial break short right before Fulcher kicks off. Because you just never know what's going to happen. Caleb Augustus moves to the right, and it's another onside kick, but covered beautifully by the George Ranch Longhorns. That was Jet Roberts, and he made a perfect play on that one. You know, you're the receiving team. It doesn't matter if it hasn't gone 10 yards. If you want to jump on it, you can, yep. and I think he made a wise decision to not get any weird sideways bounces. Sometimes I think it is better to do that. Just get up in there and get it on the hop you can get it on, and they got good field position. Last time they uh, couldn't do anything with it. Let's see what they can do this time. On the Longhorns' first possession, when they did throw the football, they threw it running plays where Lineberger could get it out of his hands very quickly. From the Fulcher 49. He gives the ball up the middle, and that play is buried for Hayden Drinker. He's just looking at a portrait of the front of the Fulcher front wall. You got Caleb Augustus, Evan Ferns, and a Shel couple more of their friends, Sheldon Rice. Sheldon Rice was in there as well. Yeah, he just, they had a little meeting in the backfield there. And this is why you can do your onside kicks, because you got a defense that can just stonewall you and here we are at second down at 13. Sheldon Rice, 11 tackles for loss coming into this game, so I guess he has at least 12. Well, or a half a tackle there, I'm not sure. He's second down and 13, empty backfield for Lineberger. Three receivers on the near side. He looks in this direction, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to scramble. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and slides down at the Fulcher 45, and I believe Brian Hooven was a grooving coming right after Lineberger, and he kind of tapped him on the side of the helmet as if to say, you were smart to slide what, what because was, I was about to blow you up. What'd you say? Uh, you, you say it's just some sort of a, 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 a decision. Uh, just what kind of a decision was that? A, a uh, business decision. decision. A good business decision there. He uh, got a good game, though. He picked up uh, about six yards. It's uh, third and seven. Now we have a whistle and a timeout. Fulcher again. Fulcher takes the timeout. We'll take it with him. Fightfortbend.com. 401 to go in the first. Chargers 14 to nothing. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri band Wi Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. 
Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. By the way, Patrick, doesn't our referee Tony Barcelona sound like the proprietor of a Tony, that's an a adjective, Tony, uh, Italian restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a lot of charisma. All right, third down and seven. After the full sure timeout, we'll see what George Ranch does. Lineberger fakes a handoff, hit as he throws, and it sails on him, and it's incomplete. He tried to get it to Jaden Mays. He was well covered by Brian Hooven, and it's going to be fourth and seven. Okay, Patrick, if you are the coach of George Ranch, do you go for it here? Uh, well, it looks like they're going to. Uh, Caleb Augustus put the pressure on him. The receiver was open. Had he had just a split second more time, he might have been able to get the ball to him. Looks like they're going to go for a Roger from the 46. Augustus leads the team in quarterback hurries. He now has 14 on the year. Fourth and seven now, Lineberger steps back. Will he punt it? Yes, he will out of the quick kick formation, and he kicked it way too hard. It goes into the end zone on the fly, so he really didn't help his team that much. The touchback on the punt will bring it out to the 20. Yeah, he wanted to get a little less on that. He, he got a little more foot in there than he would, would have liked, but um, what do you do? You know, you just do the best you can, and that's the way that one worked out for him. If he was playing golf, it's kind of like he had a little too much club. A little too much club there, yeah. Yeah, instead of a, a seven iron, he used a five iron. Flew the green. By the way, they I really like the playing surface here at Trailer. They've got every school in the, every high school in Lamar Consolidated ISD with logos starting on the left. I guess they go in historical order. Lamar Consolidated, Terry, Foster, George Ranch, Fulcher, and now Randall. I'll tell you another thing I like about this field, Roger, is they have the, I'll tell you in a second here. Let's Here's your single play. wing, Patrick. Yes. Oh, Creighton. I love it. I love it. Creighton Dickey and Zane Smith. Who will get the snap? It is Zane Smith running left behind Dickey. Gets outside the numbers. Stiff arms a man near the sideline. Gets to the 26. The man he stiff armed was Christian Lee. That's a pickup of six, and it's second and four. You know what I like about that is it's just a simple play. It's just snap it and run. Uh, some of those old-time plays uh, can still work. But anyway, I was telling you about the what I like, too, is the different shades. Every five yards, you have a dark green, light green, dark green, light green. And at the midfield, they have ten yards of it. But uh, it, it makes it just a little easier, perhaps, to, to spot where we are on the field. And after this play... I'm going to tell you another thing Coach Caduti shared with me about this single wing. This snap goes to Zane Smith again, but a flag comes in, and it was a flag prior to the play as a false start. Yep. So he said neither Creighton Dickey nor Zane Smith is right behind the center. Right. So you're not having the center angle his snap. He's not doing that. Yeah. But they, they, I broke the rule that <laughs> I – Okay. I'm sorry. I, I – said to Patrick and then I was a hypocrite <laughs> I said let's be quiet when the the referee gives the penalty and that was Tony Barcelona saying false start but at the snap they are moving right and they move to where the ball goes which is basically right between the two men Zane Smith keeps it turns it up the middle inside the outside the 40 keeps on going and dragged down just short of the 50 that would have been a touchdown if not for Cade Marino oh, he just barely got a shoulder pad there and he slowed him up and then he was able to bring him down but not till he picked up about what 29 yards or so and he also you know he picked up a first down you should think of first tire and automotive for all your car care needs check them out at firsttireandauto.com every first down tonight is brought to you by first tire and automotive there goes Zane Smith again, and he's just pushing the pile, and the pile is pulling him all the way across the George Ranch 45. And there's a little 
pushing and shoving as everybody <laughs> unpeels and gets up off the ground. By the way, Creighton Dickey must be saying, am I ever going to get to carry it? Okay, let me just tell you, some of those linemen there, we got, uh, let's see, Anderson Ling, number 74, doing a great job. Alongside him is Aaron Houston. Those guys are plowing some holes open. They're running the left every time here. Zane Smith again up the middle, and he tumbles across the 35, and he crawls toward the 30. They'll spot him at the 32, but it's another first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive. For all your car care needs, check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. And Tino Diaz also the center. They, their last three or four plays have gone right over there was those three fellows. It's been uh, Diaz, Anderson Ling, and Aaron Houston. Alongside them is their, uh, I guess he's a tight end, Braden uh, Kennedy. He's on the left side too, so why not keep doing it? They haven't you know, stopped them. Fulcher can sometimes tell opponents, here's where we're running, and they still get productivity. Productivity. There goes Creighton Dickey. He gets a carry outside the 20, and a guy takes him on and drags him down. Lots of penalty markers. The ball will be inside the 15 if the play stands. It might be a hold, I'm not sure. Number uh, 82 for Fulcher is holding his hands as if uh, I didn't do anything wrong. Dominic Giamita, Giamita? Giamita. Giamita. Uh, it's, by the way, he goes by Trey. Trey, okay, sorry about that. Dominic, I'll call you Trey from now on. Giamita. Well, you got it right. It was Giametta. Yeah, he had uh, <laughs> one of the Fulcher, I think it was number 23, if I had it right. He was uh, Colton Marino. He had him wrapped up there. And, and that. And then Dickey is saying, come on now, I finally get the ball, and uh, there's a hole there. They got two tight ends in the line. It's just a... First down and 20, Zane Smith gives it to Dickey, who runs to the right, throws the ball to throw inside the 30, and keeps rumbling all the way down to just what he needed as the line to gain. I think that'll be a first down at the 21. Well, <laughs> I really love this kind of offense. I just, especially in this day and age, when all you do is, all you see is the shotgun, and you see all this passing, and receivers split out and all this. Their, their formation, Roger, is all, it's all tight. You know, and they still, they still have the ability to get outside, and it's I just, it's very refreshing. I used to run the double wing formation when I was coaching, and so this is nostalgic for me. All right, back to the more conventional style with Ryland Forks under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Dickey. There he goes over the right hash marks. And he rumbles down inside the 10 to the 8. That'll be another first down run, and it's first and goal. You know, Roger, it, all due respect to their to their best runner, um, he, who's Patrick Broadway. He, he is an, an awesome runner. But, man, it almost seems like they can put almost anybody back there. The way they're running, they all run so so hard. Dickey gets to be the single setback here again on this play. They give it to him, running right. Leaps yeah. over a tackler near the five and goes into the end zone. It's a touchdown from eight yards out. And Fulcher extends its lead to 20 to nothing. And 20 seconds remain in the first quarter. This is uh, been, as you, as the score indicates, it's been a dominating first quarter for Fulcher. Boy, and the right side of that line that time, last couple plays, the right side of the line was doing their work. Chance Bryant and David Collum doing a great job over there on the right side along with the tight end. Zane, Zane Smith under center, he runs to the right follows his lineman, including Chance Bryant. And into the end zone he goes, the two-pointer is good. And Chance Bryant, what a team player he is. Last year he was a defensive terror as a linebacker. But Coach Caduti said, how about you play on the offensive we, line? He said, need, whatever you need. We need you over here. And I'll tell you what, Fulcher, as dominant as they are, it really begins in the trenches. They, those linemen, 
they hold their blocks, they block downfield. You got some, something that you want to read, it looks like, or some kind of. Well, I, I, yeah, but you can keep going. No, that's fine. I just, uh, I just was really complimenting their line. They just, they own the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, actually. And it works so well. And you got Broadway, who, because of the two uns unsportsmanlike conduct penalties last week in the ejection, is not playing in the first half. But he averages 190 yards per game. That's He's got <laughs> 1,520 for yeah. the year. Zane Smith averages 88.9. Demarius Froh, 83.9. So that's the three-headed monster yeah. that averages 363 yards that, per game. That is amazing. And... Um, Broadway is he's he's just special and uh, he's itching to get in there right now I'm sure I wonder how much he'll play in the second half with the score the way it is and Broadway Smith and Fro between the three of them 13 100 yard games another onside kick and there's a big scramble for the ball there were Fulcher players surrounding it but they couldn't touch it till it went 10 yards and yeah. I believe George Ranch will have it I tell you, uh, I'm impressed by the fact that George Ranch has been able to get on each of these uh, onside kicks. That one was a pretty good one. As you said, they were, there was like a little convoy of uh, Fulcher players just running with the ball. <laughs> Any kind of a, well, what do we got? Illegal touching on the kicking team. The ball be spotted after legal touching the 48. Well, Patrick, what you're describing is a situation where you can say, boys, yeah. you can look, but don't touch <laughs> until it goes 10 yards, well, and they touched it before it yeah, went 10 they, yards. They, they just got a little too close, I guess, but boy, they just, and they have different ways of doing the onside kick. They don't do it the same way all the time, and as Roger has said before, they have different guys kicking, and you don't know who's going to kick it. All right, Lineberger in a pistol formation with Hayden Drinkard behind him, and they hand it off to Hayden, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. I believe that's all he got. And let's see, there's a, an unfamiliar player to me, Patrick. Oh, boy. That's the last player of the quarter, by the way. You might want to... Okay, I think it's Jamar Wilson. Up. Jamar Wilson made the final tackle of the first quarter. It's been all full sure. They lead it 22 to nothing. We'll be back on VibeFortMen.com. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January. Featuring Olympic medalist Micah Hancock and Jordan. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January. Featuring Olympic medalist Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players, from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars, with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, four's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, we are one play into this second quarter, and Nick Perez caught a quick down-and-out pass on the near side from Lineberger. Ran out of bounds after he picked up six yards. It's second down and four. Or is it? It's third and four. There was uh, one play on yes, this series yes, prior that, to right, that the is, end of the first quarter. Last play of the quarter, and here they are. Lineberger gets it out of his hand quickly, throws it to the near sideline. It's a backwards pass, and I think it'll be good for a first down no, as Jaden Mays tight roped the sideline. I think he stepped out to where they're marking him kind of toward the line of scrimmage. They must have stepped out earlier than we thought. It did look like he tight roped it, though, and but apparently got a foot on the line well we don't have a replay to uh, tell us whether he stayed in or not so it will be fourth and four and it looks like they're gonna go for it 
unless Lineberger steps backward. Takes the snap, drops back, pump short, throws down the near sideline, got a man open inside the 15, and gone for the touchdown. What a Jonathan play. Mtabwe. He made it, gave him a little pump fake. A pump fake on a shorter pass, and he beat the defender. He was open by a good five yards and a great pass. And how about that? That's a good way to start the second quarter if you're George Ranch. So the cornerback bit on it like a, I yeah. don't know, like a big mouth bass <laughs> at a piece of bacon on a big old hook. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. He sure did. And uh, credit, credit George Ranch there to get down the board here. All right. Extra point kick, Josh Matula puts it up, and he's got it. That narrows the gap. It is now 22-7, to full sure all over George Ranch. The Longhorns will kick off when we return. Leonetti Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, T-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Grisby kicks off for George Ranch. Mike Brown takes it near the sideline, 17-yard line, back toward the middle. Now moves back to the sideline, gets to the 29 and wrestled out. And uh, maybe uh, one additional wrestling move, at least one more than the Chargers wanted, as Jake Yaki. But it was gentle. Yeah, it was. He could have been really rough. I think he was kind of losing his balance. But I want to just make comp. Oh. That's going to set him back to the 10 yard line at penalty at the 20. I wanted to comment on the George Ranch formation on that last play. They had him really spread out. They had three receivers on both sides of the field, and it was really a spread formation. And maybe that's one of their strategies now to try to spread them out a little bit. If they can protect Lineberger right. long enough to <laughs> pump short, then go long, right. they can make it work, and they did on that one. Now Forts under center with Caden Bean behind him. Fake to Bean, bootleg to the left, and Taruta in the, his end zone, throws one up, and it falls incomplete near the sideline. And you gotta be careful there. You don't wanna put it up for grabs when you are throwing off your back foot in your own end zone. He was lucky there. Um, one of the defenders almost, he almost uh, did a Willie Mays catch there going after it. He threw that ball high and toward the sidelines. I think he was trying to get it to the sidelines and he didn't quite get it that far. Anyway, he was lucky on the play. Second down and 10, the ball at the 11 yard line. That's where they start this drive after that, that penalty on the kick return. And Forks hands it off to Bean, the little fella moving to his right. And he slithers and pushes the pile best that he can. I mean, he looks like he weighs about 160. And he, he does get a nice gain, six yards, so it'll be a, a manageable third down and four. Would they go for it here if they didn't get any yards? That's a good question. I kind of doubt it, but, you know, you can't underestimate the personality and the chutzpah of Fulcher Charger Nation. <laughs> yep. Let's see if they even have to worry about it. Hubris, chutzpah. I'm not really good at my Yiddish. <laughs> But you get the idea. I said it was third and four. It's more like third and five. Bean still the setback. Forks gives it to him. Bean dodges a tackler, gets out to the 22, and it's really close to what he needs for the first down. It's right at it. And you know what, Patrick? I'm going to answer your question 
yes if they have not made the first down, but now it is a moot point. Right. As I see the chains moving, he did bean, did the first down. If it had been third and a half a yard, they would have went, or fourth and a half a yard, they would have went for it. That's your, your, your take. Yeah, if they're that close, they're going to go for it. But I was referring to a fourth and five. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that would have been, you would be real surprised with that one. Forks, steps under center. Fakes to Bean, the bootleg to the left again. He's being pursued, throws short, gets it to Zane Smith, puts a move on a man, and he gets thrown down near the 21-yard line. I think Fulster fans are wanting a horse-collar tackle, but I don't think it fit the definition, and Caleb Fontenot made just a nice open-field tackle. It was a great tackle. He did grab him, but I think he grabbed him by the shoulder, and he had his arm wrapped around the shoulder, sort of, and as you said, it did not fit the definition. It's 22 to 7. We've got 9.22 to go in the first half. And we're going to visit with Kevin Young, Pittsburgh Pirates broadcaster at halftime. And we'll have some scores, not just from what's going on tonight and the implications thereof, but games last night and the implications thereof. By the way, we have more football tomorrow, 11 a.m. kickoff, as Marshall takes on Iowa Colony. That'll be a, a good game. Really, it will be. Good. We got a timeout for Fulcher. I think they've just used their third timeout of the half here. Yeah. So um, I'm you kind got of some... surprised at that, but yeah. let's just keep it right here. Uh, one thing I was going to point out, you got Ryland Forks. He's thrown 13 touchdown passes and five interceptions this year, but he threw three interceptions in the first game alone. So the way he's been playing since then is really impressive. A completion percentage, 67%. As a sophomore. Yeah, he's just a sophomore. He's really grown in the job. And he's he's taking good care of the football because more important than anything else, you just you cannot afford to get your team beat. Yep. And so he's playing good ball security football. Ball security means job security. So yes. if you're a quarterback and you're not throwing interceptions, you're going to be pretty well off. I'll, I'll tell you what really helps him, and it would help any quarterback, is the powerful running game they have. And that really is a good thing to, you know, then the passing game is, is a good, uh, you know, offset to the, to, the, to the running game. And he's doing a great job with that, with those statistics. All right, now they go to the spread formation. Forks with Bean to his right. Zane Smith and H back on the right side of the formation. And his Forks taking the snap, throws one to Mike Brown, hit immediately, but he does not go down. Goes toward the sideline and turns it up toward the 32. Oh. And a late push, that's going to be a flag. Colton Marino just, he should have known better. He had been running with Mike along the sideline, out of bounds for five or six yards with a, a hold of, of uh, the jersey. Mike Brown's jersey and just... Gave him one more shove, and it yeah. wasn't necessary. Well, <laughs> that's what that's what unnecessary roughness is. It's unnecessary. <laughs> it was just it wasn't anything flagrant. But I'll tell you two things he did wrong. One, he did it. I mean, it was obvious. And number two, he did it on the Fulcher side. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're just not going to get away with it there. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to do that. Do it over there yeah. on your side when yeah, you got the, a whole bunch of teammates over there. You got the whole bench area seeing it and all the fans seeing it on this side. And uh, he just kind of lost it. He lost his composure or something there, and it really was not a – he didn't even push him that hard. If you're going to do it <laughs> – you gotta, you know, you it should just do it, you know, but he just, it was just a little shove, but unnecessary, and I don't want to belabor the point, but cost his team 15 yards. You know, this is the first time these two teams are meeting in varsity football competition, yet it's already a rivalry, yeah. just because of the neighborliness. <laughs> All right, we got a jet sweep coming to the near side. It's going to be short yardage. They get it in the hands of Fred Hicks, the freshman wide out. First time that Fred has touched the ball here tonight. In fact, I think it's the first time Fred has touched the ball in games that we've broadcasted of the Fulcher Chargers, and it's just a gain of three, second and seven. 
Good job by George Ranch to string that out and um, hold him to that three-yard gain. And, but I don't think, uh, we haven't seen anything so far tonight that has really been able to slow down the Fulcher offense. 22 to seven, the Chargers lead it. They have it at the George Ranch 49 with a second and seven. Hicks goes in motion, they give it to Bean on the jet sweep and he jumps over a man and tumbles forward. He gets to the 44. The tackle on that one has to go to Cade Marino who yeah. kind of submarined him, <laughs> Yeah, but he was able to get a couple more and, yards of body lean. And he also had a few words to say. They were uh, doing a little John down there. So he took the, the John Mayer approach. Say what you need to say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Third down and two <laughs> as he took it to the 44 of George Ranch. I'm going to make a comment about the Fulcher offense again, and I will do that after this play. They really are bunched up they tight are. here, looking like they just want to hammer it forward. And there is Zane Smith who takes the snap, but flags come in early. I think we might have a false start. Roger and I finally did it right. We both were quiet, and the guy gave us, a, Mr. Barcelona gave us a nice announcement, and I hope you all heard it. Uh, I think Zane Smith was short on the first down. I guess the whistle had blown, and pretty good job by the George Ranch defense there. But I was going to say that the thing about Fulcher, their offense, they can have a big play, a big run. They can score that way, but they can also take the ball down the field on a 15-play drive. If is, that's what they need to do, they'll do it. Smith takes the snap, same play, runs right, turns it up, gets the first down anymore. He's inside the 30. Whoa! The beat, and he pulls him down by his hair, which is okay. That's not against the rules. Although they throw the flag, they're going to get a horse collar tackle on Mason Rank. But I don't think that's fair because it is okay to pull hair. I have heard you say that before, and I agree with you. Uh, I was going to say before that, what a block by uh, the, 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 uh, Clayton Dick, uh, Creighton Dick. He just, he drove his man out of bounds. Here's the, here's the call. There's no foul on the play for the face mask. First down. Closer. Uh, so apparently they thought it was a face mask, and that wasn't even close to a face mask. It was a... <laughs> What do you call that? I By the it. way, you know, uh, he left his microphone on, Mr. Barcelona did, as he went over and talked to one of the full shirt coaches. He said he got him by his hair. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it was clear. Yeah, he, Roger was all over that, and you're, you're right. It's, it's, it's legal to do that if you want that hair coming out of there. Now, why, Patrick, can I not be so incontrovertibly correct in an argument with my wife? There's never... <laughs> incontrovertible oh, evidence my goodness. when you have that you know you you well you think there is but she doesn't <laughs> think it's incontrovertible okay now i just don't want to get involved in this conversation i'll let you uh, it's now, a little slice of life <laughs> yeah. as coach uh Caduti is uh trying to get the final explanation on that but roger was all over that from the beginning he tackled him from his hair. Well, Zane's mom, in an interview that we did with her a couple of weeks ago, said that, uh, you know, he doesn't really feel it. But I'll bet he felt that one. <laughs> Dropping back his forks. Throws for the end zone. And it is incomplete intended for Braden Kennedy. But he was knocked down before the ball got there at the goal line. I think it's going to be pass interference against Cade Marino. Yeah, he was there again. Uh... It, again, it's so easy to say, but had he turned, he probably would have got an interception on that play. But instead, he ran into the defender, or the offensive player. And I was, I, I stopped just in time, I think, but <laughs> you heard the pass interference call there from Tony Barcelona. We got to have some kind of signal when one of us sees that. Well, it was more than half the distance to the goal because they have it at the six. Yeah. This is uh, this drive started at the 11-yard line. Zane Smith and his long blonde hair are under center. 
He tosses it to the left. There goes Mike Brown trying to get to the edge. Looks for daylight oh. and goes oh. in untouched. Who was the lead blocker on that again? Zane Smith. He just tattooed a guy at the goal line to give the runner the last bit of yardage for the first down, or touchdown, I should say. What a play. And it wasn't just him. Anderson Ling, big number 74, yeah. was also out there, and I think uh, he pushed down somebody, and then he knocked over the pylon. <laughs> Did he push him down? <laughs> he just pushed him out of the way. It wasn't a block, it was a push down. It made it 28 to seven, and now another two point try. Zane Smith under center. Everybody's over on the left except the interior lineman. And there is a toss to Demarius Fro, who's hit at the four and goes down. George Ranch sniffed that one out. Caleb Fontenot snuffed it out like a, yeah. like a stogie on beach sand. 7.08 to go before the oh, half. Oh, boy. And we'll be back with more VitefortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. Okay, I ran the 60-second commercial before a full shirt kickoff, and I got away with it. There you go. That's uh, they haven't so kicked it, yet. So it can be done. It if can we be just, done. If we just get it off, if we get it out soon enough. You if know, you're, go. I'm sorry, I, I'm trying no, to no. throw this in. Alejandro Quinones, if you were the kicker, what would you do? <laughs> get it? And it is a longer kick. It lands at the 22-yard line. George Ranch picks it up. That is Desmond Drinkard. He finds his way through a bunch of traffic and gets oh. across the 35 to the 37 and did the, did he lose the football well there's just we just got a push and shove we fight a, we got a push and shove match going on and i don't see any uh, hankies on the on the field so that's a good thing they they just said get out of the way guys let's go back to your areas and no well, no penalty markers on that one but boy he had a good run back and then he just ran into a well you say this he ran into a wall it sure looked like he ran into a wall well, the wall must have been in the person of Brody Washbrook of Fulcher because he was the one whose his teammates were saying, just, just get back yeah. to the sideline. Yeah. But he was probably talking big because he made a big play. Sure. Let's see if uh, George Ranch can. Here's that formation again. They have three receivers on both sides. They're spreading them out. But can they protect Lineberger? Spread formation snap, hands it off to Hayden Drinkard. Goes over the right side, and he goes head over heels. What a beautiful low tackle coming in, Elijah Anderson. That was uh, a prophecy of a tackle, don't you think? Yes, it sure was. Sure was. By the way, uh, speaking of the Bible, uh, number 17 for Fulcher, Asher Jacob. He's got two Old Testament names. Yes, he does. Second down and 10. Dropping back his line, Berger. Here comes the rush, throws off his back foot, and knocked away by Logan Hudson. The pass was a little underthrown, intended for Hayden Drinkard. He was a little bit open on the uh, Fulcher side of the 50, but Logan Hudson found the ball, swatted it away. Roger, we had a good Samaritan ask if he would if he could throw our garbage away, and he picked up our garbage for us. Yes, I love that. You don't see that very often. He just, out of the blue, and it was a a little longer pass he might have ran for a touchdown on that play third down and 10 line burger throws to the left and it's a free ball and it belongs to fulcher if they call it right yes it is fulcher football it was an in incomplete sort of that's the wrong word for it but it was a backwards pass yep, it was not caught and em and eddie alley 
one of 38 seniors on this full shirt team was Johnny on the spot to to yep. recover the ball. The only thing uh, I think he would like to do better, he would like to have scooped it sure. and run it into the end zone. Sure but it's it. at the 22 yard line and that's the second turnover of the night for these George Ranch Longhorns. From, from a possible touchdown, just a little short on the pass to a backward pass turnover and just like that it's uh, from one extreme to the other. Unfortunately for the George Ranch Longhorns, you got a new quarterback in again? Or not it, a new it's one. It's Ryland but. Forks, and I think he's going to throw it to Braden Kennedy over on the left side. He rolls to the left, throws toward Kennedy, and just off his hand right inside the 10. And Forks was hit right after he threw. And how about that for sportsmanship, That's Patrick? Do Dominic Solis. Dom Solis. He, it's, uh, it's Solis. Solis, I'm sorry. Solis. Um, he, he put the pressure on him, and I guess he followed through with the tackle, but he helped him up. Yeah. Uh, sportsmanship. Nothing wrong with that. Kinda I would like, like a, to see more of that. Yes. Kind of like a Reggie White. Did he, uh, he used to give him scripture passages or something when he would uh, sack the quarterbacks. I wonder if any of the scriptures had the word smite in them. <laughs> Forks rolling to the left on second and ten. Throws it deep in the end zone. There's Kennedy. He got him. Touchdown, Braden Kennedy. What I a, knew he was thinking, i got to get him an actual catch and not just a defensive pass interference call. Well, the defender fell down, too, and that helped. And did you see how Kennedy really took, took his time to catch that ball? Because it's hard to catch it when you're that open sometimes. And unfortunately, one of the linemen for Fulcher is down, but he's up already. Yeah, not to worry. I'm that's sure good. it's just cramps. Yeah, that's big number, 75. One of those linemen that we mentioned earlier, Aaron Houston, who's uh, one of those guys that are really doing a great job for Fulcher on the line. So that ups the ante. It's now 34 to seven with the extra point to come. And they're gonna go for two again. It'll be Forks at quarterback with three running backs behind him. Creighton Dickey, Demarius Fro, and Zane Smith. And now they rearrange themselves. Oh, I got a question for you. What if Fulcher was in a playoff game and they just tied the score. They wouldn't do anything different. Smith, under center, runs to the right, practically untouched, and in he goes. The two-pointer is good, makes it 36 to seven. I wanna just compliment Dickey again on a good block. Good job by him. He is a weapon. Yep. We'll be back. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive four's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players, from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Alejandro Quinones bombs the kickoff deep and it's going to be returned by Desmond Drinkard. He's in trouble inside the 20 but he keeps escaping and he gets across the 20 to the 23. He made the most of a very tough situation and now we have pushing and shoving as the players get up <laughs> it's uh they're doing actually there's a little bit of something going on but they're doing a decent job of getting out of there after the initial whatever the words being spoken or whatever uh, good job though by drinker uh, he's got some shifty feet he is able to get around some of that traffic and got out to the 23 when it didn't look like he was going to get even past the 20. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this game. Um, it doesn't really seem like George Ranch has played that poorly. It's just that Fulcher is just 
so dominant. You know, uh, George Ranch has had turned the ball over a couple of times, but it's not like they're, you know, inept. You know, they're just you're getting steamrolled by a, a, a better team right now. And as a parallel, um, tonight George Ranch is having a little bit more success than the Terry Rangers were last night against Randall. But there have been a lot of tackles for loss and plays where the Fulcher defensive front just penetrates, right. gets into the backfield. And so I think there's a lot of similarities between the defenses of Randall and Fulcher, and the beauty of it is yes, we could go to Arlington, and it is possible that both of them could be playing in state championship football games. And not each other. Not each other. Which would be really cool. Lineberger, empty backfield. Throws it to the near side. He's got a completion near the sideline. A first down and more. A well-executed play they deliver to Nick Perez, and he turns it up and gets the first down. Let's see. Uh, hold on, Patrick. I want to make sure I'm accurate here. That's first down. It's a 10-yard gain. Yep. That's first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. New line of scrimmage is the 33. Lineberger sends a man in motion. That is Hayden Drinkard who goes behind him, and he throws a backwards pass. He's hit immediately. Caleb Augustus. What a play. He just, he's as fast as the guy they threw it to. That's part of the problem for George Ranch. And then he's is bigger. It, oh, he, he's bigger. And he sniffed it out. He knew exactly what was about to happen. Well, they had a lot of guts throwing it behind the line of scrimmage again after they lost the ball on the last possession. And he, uh, I don't. There was not much there that time. And well, Augustus not only was all over. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, not much there, but it, there was a negative five there. Right, that's right. So it's second down and 15. Similar formation. Lineberger drops back. Here comes the rush, and it engulfs him. Down he goes at the 19-yard line. Number that nine. time they got Asher Jacob, the man with two Old Testament names. Along with uh, that was a Jamar sack Wilson. of biblical proportions. <laughs> Jamar Wilson in on that sack as well as Asher Jacob and Jamar Wilson had a little quarterback sandwich on that play, and all of a sudden it's third and what is it about 23 yards to go? Well, you know, if I should have given equal billing between Jamar Wilson and Asher Jacob, it's because Asher Jacob flexed. Right. Right. He got up and flexed, and so that drew my attention. <laughs> Jamar Wilson uh, acted like he'd uh, done it before. <laughs> wow. Third down and 23. Lineberger drops back, does get it out of his hand. It is tipped and incomplete. Logan Hudson with visions of his fourth interception of the year dancing in his head yeah. is just wishing he could have held on. Well, and that would have been a pick oh, six. He, would have, he could have gone backwards into the end zone. He had so much room over there, but the receiver was somewhat open behind him. I don't know if they'd have got the first down, but a good play though by by the defender Hudson, the linebacker. All right, Mike Brown is ready to return the punt. And I confess, Patrick, I haven't been able to figure out who the punter is. That ball got tipped, I and think. the ball was tipped. In the backfield, I think the punter is Nathan Mangus and partially blocked, and Fulster leaves it alone. It comes to a stop at the 36 of George Ranch, a 15-yard punt. Not what they had in mind. I see you have a bag of ice. Patrick's headset is off, so he can't respond right now. <laughs> okay, he's coming back. Okay, Patrick, so I saw you take that bag of ice. Did you just put it somewhere farther away? Well, I just, it, it was kind of disrupting our area here, and I didn't realize it was doing that. And it's not yours, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, I brought a, a, a soft drink. All right. Ryland Forks throws one to Hicks. He's got it inside the numbers. 20, 15, 10. One man knocks him out of bounds inside the 10. That's Cade Marino. And the freshman is showing out. Fred Hicks. That's a big game. Uh, 30 yards to be exact. And do we have a flag? Oh, no. That's a shame. Uh, 
Looks like they're going to bring some of that back. Right. They have a little bit to talk about at halftime. They had a, kind of, had a couple of penalties where they brought back a couple of big plays. They've been over, over been able to overcome those, but uh, as a coach, you always got to have something to, to bark about, don't you? Yeah, you do. You're not happy unless you're unhappy, that kind of thing. Although Coach Caduti, I, I wouldn't want him yelling at me, but he looks like he's very positive about most things. Forks. Play action pass, near sideline, lifting it up for Hicks. He's pushed as the ball comes down, and it's interference against Colton Marino. Well, I didn't see that interference. I, I did that, see a push. Are you sure I that's just, not offensive? Yes. Because it, I didn't see the defender really do much there. I, I'll bet you a Whataburger, it's defensive pass interference. Uh, uh, that, that, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the words of um, who's that announcer for, for basketball? Um, he does a lot of that. Dickie V? No, 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 no. Um, gosh, I can't. Dead or alive? He's alive. Um, <laughs> I really like him a lot. I can't think. Raftery, Bill Raff. Bill Raftery. He uh, he he would say that's a nickel and dimer. That's a nickel and dimer. And it might have been uncatchable. I but just, it is first down, nevertheless, for Fulcher at the 25 of George Ranch. Forks under center. Turns around and hands it off. And a run to the right. It is Caden Bean gets near the sideline and wrestled out at the 15. Cade Marino makes another tackle. He's having to make a whole lot of those tonight. Yeah, you don't want the guy in the back, you know, the cornerbacks and the safeties making all the tackles. And that's happening quite a bit here for George Ranch as we have made it underneath the four minute mark. It's already 36 to seven, and I don't know what's gonna stop Fulcher from scoring again here before half. By the way, I gave Bean credit for getting to the 15, but they marked him out at the 16, so it's second down and one. Was it a good spot, Roger? Yeah, I think so. I think they kinda, his foot must have slid out while the ball was at the, uh, not as close. And now Forks on the play action pass is sacked beautiful sack dominic solis we've mentioned his name several times and he was not fooled one bit by the bootleg and down went forks for a loss of wow a, a loss of 10. so it's yeah. now third and 11 they go from second and one to third and 11. it looked like a play to the right then a reverse to the left and but he wasn't buying any of it solis took him down for the 10 yard loss Good play by him. He's got that pink shirt coming out of his jersey there. A lot of pink in the stadium, especially yep. over on the George Ranch side. All right, here we go. Forks out of the spread. Throws it quickly to Mike Brown. Near side, gets around his man. Inside the 10, fighting down to the 7. And he's got the first down. They mark him at the 8. First and goal from right there. Well, it's interesting. Some of the easy, some of the best plays in football are, are the easiest design. He ran down the field about eight yards, basically stopped and turned around. They threw it to him, and then he just outran the defender for extra yardage. And he turned the shoulders quickly to the outside. Yes. So if, if a sportscaster is describing the highlights <laughs> on the late night show, he'll just go zip. Because it was that kind of move. He is a quick guy, and he's only a freshman. Just a freshman. He has really got a future ahead of him. Ryland Forks fakes to Bean. Throws in the flat. Zane Smith can walk in from there. He could have hopped in on one foot from the five-yard line. Nobody went with him. And there is another touchdown for Fulcher. And with 2.38 to go in the first half, it is 42-7 with the extra point try to come. Uh, nobody... Either they lost track of Zane Smith or nobody was assigned to him because he was wide open. And like you said, he could have, I don't know, he could have bear crawled into the end zone. They're going for two as they have all night. Zane Smith will be under center. Creighton Dickey is right behind him. Smith takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, going right, and easily gets into the end zone for the two-point play that makes it 44-7. The route is on. We'll be back on ViteFortBend.com. 
By the way, stick around for halftime, at least halftime, okay? Because we got a good interview with Kevin Young, and we got some scores that you'll be interested in. We'll be right back. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. Okay, why, you may ask, is Tony Barcelona talking to us already, coming out of that commercial? Well, it's because Fulcher, they huddled up two or three yards away from the teed-up football at the 40, and then they suddenly took a real hard step at the ball, and one of them stepped over the 40, which is offsides, so the penalty flag was thrown, and now they'll kick it from their 35. Alejandro Quinones might be the guy who's going to kick the ball. You never know with the Chargers. It is Quinones. He kicks it fairly deep. Comes down at the 12-yard line to Desmond Drinker. Making moves. Running up the numbers. He gets another productive kickoff return when he had a whole bunch of white jerseys bearing down on him. Takes it all the way to the 37. That's yeah. a 25-yard return. He has a knack. A real good knack of Making guys miss, weaving his way through, and he's able to get to the 37. Well, 36. We're going to mark it. Yep. I, I do my best to visually spot the ball when the play ends. I don't wait for the officials to put it down because then our listeners have to wait too long. But I seem like they, they just... I'm not saying I'm a yard off. I'm saying they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roger. The percentage chance that Fulcher will hit 50 before halftime with 2.30 to play. Mm, that's a good question. Let me think about that. I think they're going to get there. I think they will. But they have used all their timeouts, as you noted earlier. Yes. Lineberger hands off to Hayden Drinkard. Pops through. Nice run. Gets 11. Quickly over the right side. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Hayden Drinkard running like he's frustrated and angry as he was brought down by Iamin Eddie Alley. And George Ranch hurrying up from there, 47. Hand off to Hayden Drinkard again. Finds daylight. Gets about eight yards to the 45 of Fulcher before he's pulled down. George Ranch, by the way, has three timeouts, but Fulcher has used all of its timeouts. So the idea of Fulcher scoring 50 here in the half, if uh, George Ranch continues to run the ball as they are, that clock's going to run out. For those eggheads who would give you percentages, the percentage is a lot lower than it was two plays ago. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's a toss sweep. Hayden Drinker oh, tosses it back deep in the backfield. This is going to be a, a productive play, I think. Cade Marino. No, it's not Cade Marino. Sorry, it's Jaden Mays. And he's run out of bounds at the full sure 36. Yeah, boy, he, was he got gonna, nine. He was going to get a loss on that play, and he made a really nice move to uh, elude some of the pursuit, and then he got some yeah, some uh, daylight to the left side, and he got a first down. Yeah, actually he got 10. I said he got nine, he got 10. Remember last, remember you said that, that offensive lineman, uh, what's his name, uh, Chance Bryant? Yep. He's back, he's on the defensive side now. Yeah, he's, he's good at both. Lineberger bootlegs to the right. Runs away from the pressure. He's near the sideline. Now he reverses his field back toward the middle, and he's rocked at the 35. That was Wraith Taruda, 
who came up from his safety spot and brought him down after a gain of one. And the aforementioned Chance Bryant was in there as well. Uh, a minute to go, second and nine. Let's see what they can do. So Chance Bryant's been doing most of his, his reps on offense, and yet he has 13 quarterback hurries. That's pretty impressive. Second down and nine for George Ranch. 44 seconds to go in the first half of the clock, ticking down. Lineberger drops the football, and it's recovered by Fulcher at their own 41-yard line. He kind of, it looked like maybe, and by the way, Chance Bryant falls on the football. <laughs> and Lineberger, it looks like maybe his center or another lineman might have stuck his foot back there, mm -hmm. tripped him up. He started trying to lunge with the ball to get it in his running back's belly. And he dropped it, and Chance Bryant jumped on it right on cue. Maybe yes. he somehow knew and that we were talking about him up here. And for all those betting people, the prospects have gone up now for a possible 50 points. Well, Fulcher has never been shy about trying to get as many points as possible. There's still 38 seconds. Roger had mentioned no timeouts left, but they can still use the sideline. And you never know. They got, what? 59 yards to go but that hadn't stopped him before you never know when they've got Demarius Fro <laughs> and he is the single setback fake to Fro forts to throw deep down the field on the post pattern it is caught it is caught inside the 10 and down at the 6 and it's going to be a horse collar tackle <laughs> Braden Kennedy makes the catch and Colton Marino throws him down that'll draw a flag the clock stops with 29 seconds left and the percentage chance that Fulcher will get to 50 points <laughs> before the half has gone up. It's percent now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about 99. Yeah. I'd put it in the 90s, though. Yeah, just a couple of plays ago it was at about probably 5%, and now it's all the way up to 95. I don't know how they're going to stop them here. I think uh, we're still going to get the adjudication of the infraction. Okay, so uh, Tony Barcelona never gave the details on the penalty, but that's okay. Maybe he will during this timeout. He's walking like he's going to maybe say something here. During the run, personal foul, fourth foul, the defense, has to get up to the goal, first down. We've seen a tackle by the hair. Right. We've seen a horse collar tackle. We've seen some tackles that look like horse collar tackles, but we're simply just grabbing the jersey. Yep. We've seen quite a bit, and that was a nice long pass play. They were able to hit the receiver who was open. And I believe that was uh, that was Kennedy again, right? Yes, was it was. They are, they've been getting Braden Kennedy open deep. Good pass. Often. Really good pass. All right, Fro is the setback. Forks under center. And it's going to be a fade route to the far corner. It is Kennedy. He got it. Touchdown. Unbelievable. That was a great catch. He really showed patience there. The defender just kind of overran it slightly. Kennedy was patient. Got those feet set. And made the catch. And there it is, 50. 50 points. There used to be a tire company that made the Magic 50. Long time ago. I think it was called White's Magic 50. Mm. Not so magic feeling for George Ranch, though. No. Under center, it is Zane Smith running right, turns it up the middle, and gets the two-point play. It makes it... 52 to 7 with 23 seconds to go in the half and the Fulcher flag team running down the field I think those are cheerleaders yes. who maybe are subbing for the flag core because the flag core might be tired <laughs> they've run up and down the field so many times they probably run close to a mile already by the way join us tomorrow well I say join us Patrick is going to be busy with other things He'll be on a mission from God. And we've got the Marshall Buffs taking on Iowa Colony. Hall Stadium. In Hall Stadium. So in District 9, Class 5A, Division 2, 
Randall undefeated. Looks like there's no way that they won't be the outright district champions. And you want to be in second place if you're any of the other teams. So this game tomorrow between Marshall and Iowa Colony could make a huge difference in whether you get a favorable first round playoff opponent or someone, you know, if you lose the game, you might end up taking on somebody that is more than a match for you. Somebody you don't want to play. What Here. would you do if you are Alejandro Quinones? <laughs> We're gonna find out. Striding toward the football, he takes a circuitous route and he kicks it. It's kind of uh, lands inside the 30 and George Ranch simply falls on it with 21 seconds to go in the half. And another bit of Scrimmage. shoving. Jonathan Chipman is involved for Fulcher and Chipman is pointing at the scoreboard. And he has some teammates who say, just get back over the sideline, come on. Every uh, So you got uh, Quinones restoring order along with Braden Kanak. It they, might be Kanak. They uh, seems like every time we have a kickoff, we've got a little bit of a skirmish now. Oh, by the way, there's something that made me very, 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 very happy. Um, I have a favorite former volleyball player. She's Ava Underwood. She played at Fulcher when she was a sophomore. They won a state championship. She plays for A&M, and they beat Texas this past week. Ooh. And Texas is nationally ranked. Wasn't supposed to happen. The Aggies took them down in five sets. And I am just so, so very happy for Ava and her teammates. All right, 29-yard line, 21 seconds to go in the half. Lineberger, no, it's actually Caden Drinker going to take the direct snap and run right. He's breaking tackles. He's across 50, still going far sideline and thrown out of bounds. And I think we're going to get a flag on, uh, I'm not sure what it's for, but Brian Hooven threw him out of bounds at the full sure 44. There are 11 seconds left. And I have a feeling that they're going to be at the 29-yard line after this penalty. Let's see what Tony Barcelona has to say on that one. Well, it was over on the far side of the field, so we really couldn't it see it all that see. well. Yeah, hard to see. But uh, the crowd over there and the sidelines definitely were commenting. Timeout, George Ranch. That is their second time out of the half. We'll be right back. We are the volleyball school with three locations. Katie, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 181. 20 West Belfort. Visit the volleyballschool.com and come train with us. The final regular season edition of Tuesday Night Volleyball presented by the Volleyball School is Fulcher against Foster. It is at Fulcher and we'll have it for you at about 5 30 p.m. Fulcher looking to stay undefeated in their district matches and Wow, it is just very exciting thinking about the high quality in Region 3 of Class 6A. You got Fulcher, you got Pearland, you got Stratford, although Stratford will certainly be in the small school division. You got Ridgepoint. That's some good stuff. All right, from the 29-yard line, 11 seconds to go. Hayden Drinkert going to take the direct snap. I don't know if he throws the football very well or not. But he sends a man in motion to the right, now to the left. Now throws it to the sideline and the catch is made. And timeout is quickly called by George Ranch with five seconds to go as they delivered it to Christian Lee. And that is their final timeout and they need to heave it to the end zone and hope for a catch and a touchdown or an interference call. Yep, this should be the last play, barring a penalty. 
They don't have much time uh, for anything else. No more timeouts, as you said. The bands are all poised and ready to do some performing here at halftime. I see some, uh, not only the band, but the equipment and uh, I guess, what, you, what do you call the props? The props are getting ready. A lot of props. Yeah. They don't look like cheap props either. No. Look like sunflowers or something from the George Ranch side. By the way, you know that song, Sunshine Go Away Today? Yeah. Who I sang that? Good question. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's a good song. I have a feeling it was a one-hit wonder. Yeah, it was a good song, though, yeah. Speaking of that, I have a a band that I wanted you to give me a, your assessment of. Okay, make let's let's do it right now. Okay. Three Dog Night. Love them. Uh, lots of unforgettable songs like uh, Joy to the World. Yep. I love One is the Loneliest Number. Oh, I love that song. Yeah. Easy to Be Hard was a good song. Didn't get that much pub. Mm -hmm. I could go on. <laughs> Mama Told Me Not to Come. Oh, that's a great song. Second down and four. And it's Lineberger back into the game. Here comes the pressure. Throws it near the sideline. Incomplete. And there was still one second left when that ball hit the ground. But I turned and looked at the scoreboard, and it went down to zero. And I think yeah. maybe George Ranch's coaches are going to say, you know, let's the hey. ball hit the ground, and there was one second left, and they would be right. What's that? Patrick is being asked a question that we as the web radio crew have no <laughs> idea what the answer would be. That's okay. Uh, Sometimes they think we're the PA announcers. They should have. We had one second, and uh, but they just let it go. They, they they let that last second go. Just it, it hung there at one second, and and then somebody said, "Let's just click it." Click you know, it. you know what that reminded <laughs> me of? Do you remember in 2009, Texas playing Nebraska in the Big 12 championship game, Colt McCoy's senior year? I think I remember that. And he threw a pass yeah. toward the sideline mm -hmm. to try and stop the clock so his team could kick a field goal. Yep. And it looked like the clock had run out before the ball hit the white field turf of the sideline. Right. But they went back and looked at it, and they said there was one-tenth of a second left yeah. so that Texas could kick the game-winning right. field goal. And uh, I remember, let's see, Frank, Frank, uh, the Nebraska coach was Frank oh, Solich. Solich, yeah. Oh, yeah. he was hot. Yeah. And I didn't blame him. But wasn't it, it was the right call, wasn't it? Or, well, or not. It was, it, was, it was so close. Yeah. So you, very close. You know, the uh, the replay is good, but sometimes you just wonder how, you know, maybe it's a little too much. You know, it's amazing. All right. I know you want to get to the break and get to our halftime. Yeah, Kevin oh. Young. I, I made a new best friend when the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, Pirates came to town and played the Astros back during the summer, and now Kevin Young joins us for halftime we'll be right back on vipefortmen.com after this from love houston league one volleyball mark your calendars professional volleyball is coming to houston in january 2025 led by houston's newest pro team love houston volleyball get ready for non-stop action as some of the world's best players take the court Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. All right, it's halftime on VipeFortMen.com. We're glad to have you with us, and it's always good to have a guest who can kind of maybe help high school athletes out thinking about their future. You know, how bad do they want to play a game professionally and things like that? And our guest tonight is Kevin Young. He's he's the part of the Pittsburgh Pirates TV broadcasting team. And you were a Pittsburgh Pirate just about all of your major league career. Tell us, uh, first of all, how's your body? I know guys that played 12 years like you did, you know, sometimes you got the aches and pains. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You feel them a lot more the older you get, but I have to say the body held up pretty good. Uh, and now I'm reaching a place where I'm almost 50, well, 55 years old now. A couple of partial knee replacements, but the golf game's still intact, so uh, still able to have a nice quality of life. Well, you don't look the age that you said, <laughs> you know. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, 
nearly every game that you played was as a Pittsburgh Pirate in your entire major league career. And you had, I'm not going to call it a cup of coffee. It was kind of an urn of coffee with Kansas City, 55 games in 1996. And I guess whenever somebody makes it to Major League Baseball, you think, well, there's a good chance I could be moving around a lot. You didn't move around a lot. Yeah, it was, it was very unique for me. I uh, made it to the big leagues. I drafted in 1990 out of the University of Southern Mississippi. And then, uh, you know, literally shortly after that, I was in the big leagues in, in the 92 season. So uh, it was a very rapid, you know, uh, part of getting to the big leagues. I took my lumps at the big leagues, uh, but I did not move around much at all. And so I've always... I always looked at that and I was always thankful that that was a blessing. Uh, it really was just to be in one organization, to get to know the people, the city. And, uh, and fortunately, you know, it worked out for me. It's typically not the case, but I had a lot to do with why I'm actually doing what I do now is the relationships that you bend over a long period of time and how you treat people. And one of my biggest things was uh, the game's always bigger than yourself. So you learn how to treat everything that comes with the games, whether it be, you know, in our case, the umpires, the people that, you know, clean up the stadium afterwards. It was always about uh, making sure this is uh, way bigger than myself. Well, coincidentally, so you go back to Kansas City to play part of your career, and that's where you played high school. So tell us about your high school experience. Were you more than a baseball player, or did you stick just with baseball? Yeah, it was really just baseball. And, and the true story, I mean, my freshman and sophomore year of my baseball team, I tried out for the baseball team and got cut both years, my freshman and sophomore year. So it wasn't until you know my junior year that I actually made the team. And I always recall this story because it – you know, even at the age of you know 16 at the time, I remember driving up to the football field late at night, uh, preparing for baseball tryouts. And this is in the middle of you know November, December, December when it's snow all over the ground. And I would uh, climb over the football field stadium uh, fence and run stadium stairs and, and do all that stuff just so I could make the team. Uh, but I always remember that because at that age, at 16 years old. I made a very crucial decision in my life, and I always try to share with, with teenagers that, you know, at that time, you can make a decision can really alter or change the, the rest of your life. And for me, it was the ability to fight to, to what you really wanted to do, which was, for me, make the baseball team. And I did, and, and obviously it turned into be a, you know, a 12-year major league career on the big scope of things, so it was a good decision. Kevin Young is part of the Pittsburgh Pirates broadcast team, and his partner Greg Brown is the guy who, when the Pirates win, he says, raise the Jolly Roger. So I, I just feel like he's talking to me I'm somehow. Not, I'm not lifting you up, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is quite enjoyable to have a partner like that. Greg, Greg and I have known each other literally for 30 years, believe it or not, because he was, uh, he was my AAA uh, announcing at the time when I played for the Buffalo Bisons, which was the AAA affiliate at the Pittsburgh Pirates at the time. And so when when Greg actually ended up getting the job in Pittsburgh, that was uh, shortly after that, I think in 1994. And by that time, I was already established in uh, you know my rookie year in 1993. So it uh, so we've been we've been around each other, we know each other really well, and it's really nice to be able to have a job where you've had a relationship, you know, for with somebody for that amount of time and uh, so it's just another blessing that I've had throughout this game. Well I don't want to dwell on the high school experience too much but I did want to ask you did anyone ever try to persuade you to play football and or basketball in addition to the baseball because you're a big dude. Yeah my baseball was always the, the number one love I got into that at six years old my mom actually got me into baseball my, and she's also the one that kept me away from football and it was mostly because my dad was a three-sport letterman, and uh, he ended up his senior year uh, playing football. His senior year, he ended up blowing out his knee, and uh, he was a, a switch-hitting shortstop and, you know, a guard on the basketball team and all that. So he was a, a super athlete, and so all that just went away instantly. Uh, he never ended up going to college because his knee was just tore up. And so for that reason, my mom was like, no. You know, it was it, she did not allow me to play football. Uh, she probably would if I really wanted desire, but she had her way of influencing me that that's not the right sport for me, so I never ever got into it. And interestingly, Ryan Presley, relief pitcher for the Astros, he was playing quarterback on his high school football team, and he messed up his knee, but fortunately for him and everyone who loves him, he was able to rehab that knee, and he continued his baseball career, but that was it as far as football. Um, Kevin Young, can you stick around with us just a few more minutes? Absolutely.
<laughs> All right, we'll take a break on VipeFortMen.com. Good to have Kevin Young with us. And we're going to talk about perhaps the best rookie pitcher in all of baseball when we return. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, we're back with Kevin Young. He's a former baseball star, 12 years with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and now the Pittsburgh fans get to listen to him all the time on their TV broadcasts. So I wanted to ask you if you've heard of a certain kid. His name is Braylon Payne. He got drafted in the first round, number 17 overall, went to Milwaukee, and Braylon is kind of a, they say he's a five-tool player, super fast, uh, but I know you probably, you prepare to do the broadcast that you do. And when they get to the majors, then, uh, then you'll be talking about Braylon Payne. I hope. Yeah. And I look, I look forward to hearing about him and seeing him at that point. I mean, that's always good to hear. You like to see young talented kids make it to this point. So hopefully I'll get to see him soon. You know, there's so many folks that will talk about education. You know, I, I, I've heard so many people that say that, all right, you sign a letter of intent to play whatever sport it is you like or that you're good at, then um, what you do is is you you go ahead and sign that letter of intent and you better get that education. But Raylan Payne, like so many uh, guys who worked hard enough to earn that opportunity, the Milwaukee Brewers offered him $3.4 million and he signed it. So he's has launched his professional baseball career in the way I see it. If you don't know that you should accept a $3.4 million <laughs> check, your education has failed you. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And uh, we can definitely go to school for a lot less. <laughs> so we can use that, that money to actually pay for numerous, numerous degrees in overtime. But, yes, uh, that is a heck of an honor to be able to be considered like that. And I'm glad he made that decision. I know a lot of people, you know, could go to, go to school uh, in different ways for growth. But when it comes to the money, you can do both. I mean, I like to see guys that continue their education. I'll be the first one to tell you, uh, just watching players as they come through Major League Baseball or come through a minor league system, and baseball in particular, you can really tell. I've, I've came up in, in uh, player development a lot the last 10 years. And so uh, you can tell the maturity that kids have that come out of college because they've been forced to, to deal with time management, uh, learn how to manage a lot of things about life, adversity um, the ones that go through high school have yet yet to do that and you can see how that affects them as they go out on their own living in smaller towns and the minor league towns that they live in um, and so it makes it makes a big difference but uh, once again you, when you have money like that uh, it can create some opportunities that are well as it is you know you like to see that too well Kevin speaking of money it's been a long time since you were at Southern Mississippi and there was no such thing as NIL at that time. And now you have college athletes, both men and women, in lots of different sports, making a, a pretty decent uh, chunk of change for playing the sport that they play. Have you ever kind of thought about what it would have been like if you had been able to play at Southern Miss for money and it would have been okay with the NCAA? You know what? I truly don't. But, but that's me specifically. I, I've always tried to live my life with, with no regrets. I don't live with hypotheticals at all. I always thank, you know, thank God for the blessings that were bestowed upon me at that moment. Uh, and that's just me. But, you know, I, I, real, I will say that next generation that's coming now has an opportunity to be just like we said before. It's an opportunity that you need guidance for. I mean, you've had people, make sure you have a mentor or somebody in your life 
you know, whether your parents or whoever, and preferably somebody that your parents, along with the professional, that's experienced that as well, because a lot of parents aren't used to being able to have that thrust upon them either. So uh, there, there can be a lot of mismanagement and a thought process behind that. And so you want to continue to, to grow as an individual, as an athlete, uh, and have that knowledge where you can actually make the right decisions if you're blessed to have that opportunity. Kevin, uh, something about baseball. I mean, I love to see anybody, you know, break into the professional ranks, and that, that's fantastic. But there's something about baseball. I can be watching a game. There's some young man out there. I've never even heard of him, but – he goes in, gets that first at bat, or maybe he's making a, an appearance on the mound, and they cut to his family in the stands. And I get teary every time because I think, how many people had to make us make sacrifices? So how many people gave him advice along the way like you were just talking about? And, uh, I mean, there, there's just nothing like seeing somebody make it to the show. And, and I wonder, do you – I've always – tried to nail down a, a number and somebody told me a long time ago although no, don't know if it's accurate one out of 25 players who ever gets into professional baseball sees even one day in the majors do you think that's about a correct number wow it's it's, pro it's probably less than that to be wow. quite honest and uh i mean there's not it does not happen very often uh a lot of a lot of guys that are like the top round first round picks you'll see those top five rounds usually kind of get an opportunity but then that number draws off drastically after that i mean it drops uh, tremendously so once again it's when you're young you, you feel like you're in the best shape of your life um you always feel like you're the one that can break that mold right it's uh but it is a challenge but that's why i always say it's not about all the noise around you it's literally about being consistent and being the best version of yourself and pushing yourself on a daily basis. I mean, it's not about you you know, what you do when people are watching. And most importantly, it's about what you Some do when deliver. people aren't well, watching. And that's why I always refer back to being on those stadium stairs in the middle of the wintertime. Uh, nobody else was out there. But um, that usually helps you put the right mindset in to accomplish some good goals. Kevin, this is fun. Can we do one more segment? Absolutely. Yeah. Outstanding. Thank you very much, Kevin Young. And the check will be in the mail soon for <laughs> spending so much time with us here on VibeFortBend.com. Leonetti Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. We continue our visit with Kevin Young, former Pittsburgh Pirate, and now a broadcaster for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I, I hear every ball player knows his career stats. So I just wanted to see, uh, do you know your your uh, batting average in your 12 years? At uh, career 258. Exactly. And your OPS? Ooh, don't know that one. <laughs> 762. Oh, that's not bad. I like that. I like that. That's and, cool. and one thing I, I really, really like is your feeling percentage, .998 over at first base. Yeah, that's now that one I do take a lot of pride at because Willie Starzl was a big mentor for me, um, and I broke all his records in Pittsburgh at first base, so um, it always made me feel good. <laughs> oh, speaking of Willie Starzl, not this is not so much about him, but there is something I saw called a documentary. D O C K you yes. mentory about Doc Ellis yes. and those yes. great Pirates teams, including the seventy one team. They beat the Orioles. That actually disappointed me. I was kind of rooting for the Orioles that year when I was nine. But uh so what do you know about that long ago Pirates team? Uh amazing. I I get to spend a lot of time with with the guys that are now still with us. Um, but the ones that have passed as well, I spend a lot of time with them. I do a lot of stuff with the alumni, uh, whether it be fantasy camps or outings together, golf tournaments. And so over the years, I've spent a ton load of time with guys. And we've lost a few over the, over the years. Uh, you know, Grant Jackson, you know, Rennie Stennett, a lot of those guys have just recently passed over the last two or three years. And so uh, they're tremendously missed. And obviously, Willie Stargell was one, like I said, a big mentor for me. 
Um, and so he's missed as well. I mean, uh, one of the big ones was Bruce Keeson, who was a, a coach of mine in Kansas City, a pitching coach. Um, and so it's just so many guys that from, from that era that I was able to, to have to consider to be a mentor and a friend. All right. Uh, another statistical thing. How many hits did you have? Um, I'm have to go with a thousand eight, maybe. That sound close? Thousand. Real close. A thousand seven. All right, that was close. Oh, they must have took one away from me somewhere. I missed it. <laughs> I'm sure the official score screwed you over at one point. But how about this? Just a coincidence. Tony Dorsett from the University of Pittsburgh won the Heisman Trophy in 1976. Was a rookie with the Cowboys in '77, and you know how many yards he got in his first season. A thousand and seven, exactly the number of hits you had. I will remember that because I, growing up, my mom grew up in San Antonio, so it forced me to be a Cowboys fan early on in life. So Dallas Cow, I can remember those teams. Roger Staubach, I can remember all of those guys. So now, now I know that it will stick with me. How many yards he rushed for? All right, so they call you the Little Hurt. I didn't realize that you had a nickname. That's a good one. I guess Frank Thomas is even bigger than you. Yeah, he is. Frank was about 6'5". I'm about 6'3". Uh, but Frank was built a little, little, he's a little bit bigger in a lot of different areas. But, yeah, that was one that kind of kind of stuck. And my, my teammate, Al Martin, ended up taking it over. And uh, then they just started calling me KY. But, yeah, but that was one that stuck for a little bit. KY. Yeah, just my initials. But trust me, I got a ton load of jokes from that and still do. But Roger, you're in reaching distance right now, so you better not joke with me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that. Uh, but I do, uh, I'm always interested in how you got into broadcasting. You know, sometimes it's something that a player gets near the end of his career and he aspires to do it. You think it'll be a great idea. And sometimes someone just suggests it and said, you ought to try that. So how did you get into this broadcast booth? Um, I can tell you, Mark Garter, head of our media relations at the time, uh, this is all at the end of my career, really, and he just talked, have you ever thought about getting involved in it? And I was like, no, not really. I just want to go home and be a dad, you know. Because um, right then, my son is about six years old, Caleb. And um, so I did venture back into it. You know, obviously, about 10 years later, I got back into player development, and I did that for about seven or eight years. And then once that happened, I started transitioning a little bit into some TV radio, and uh, and it was Mark Garter that really got it, got me going in. And I just really appreciated that opportunity, but it, mostly because the relationships you built. I mean, Pittsburgh is, is definitely a rich city with a lot of tradition and uh, a lot of relationships throughout the course of it. And so it makes it real easy to, um, to be able to be around good people. And how old is your boy now? He's 27 now. Yeah, and then my daughter's 20. So, yeah, they're, they're, they have now... Well, kind of gotten off the payroll a little bit, but not really. They never do. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. By the way, my son is also 27. He and his wife are going to bring us our first grandkid in either December or January. Oh, and I, it sounds like being a dad is as big a blessing for you as it's been for for me and my wife and I just uh, we're very proud of our boys yeah, you should be Roger you'll be a good granddad looking forward to hearing about that <laughs> all right Kevin Young thanks a lot all right, thank you. I have a new best friend well <laughs> well maybe that's you know he, he's gonna forget about this but thank you very much for being with us I appreciate it thanks for the time all right third quarter coming soon we'll be back on vipefortmen.com <laughs> Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. 
What a great Friday night it is across Texas. So let's let's tell you about a few things. First of all, the latest rankings from Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. Only Class 6A. That's all we're going to deal with as far as the rankings because the game tonight here is a 6A game. Duncanville still ranked number one. North Shore is ranked number two, but North Shore is locked up in a battle with Atascacita, which is ranked number four. And we'll update you on that game momentarily. Fulcher is ranked number 11, and they just keep waiting for someone in the rankings one through 10 to lose, and and nobody's doing it. So Fulcher just keeps winning, but they're still at number 11 in the state. Katy, seven and one, after winning their game last night over Katy Pato, they are at 13. Ridge Point is 14th, and High Tower is 18th. And next week on Halloween night, the biggest game in Fort Bend ISD of the season, no question about it. It'll be Ridge Point against High Tower. Both will be undefeated. Okay, so Patrick, did you follow all that so far? I have followed it so far. All out. Now, now let's don't confuse think, me now. Okay, now let's think about the district, the 6A district that includes the Katy schools. Last night, Katy beat Pato. 37 to 3. Last week, Katie beat Jordan 17 to 7. The only points that Katie gave up were on a pick six. It's not like their defense gave up any points against Jordan, and they only gave up three points last night against Peto. So meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Katie Tigers still ruling that district 19 6A. So now let's think about District 26A, which is the one that includes these Fulcher Chargers. The Foster Falcons last night beat Hastings 21 to six. So Foster is gonna end up with a respectable record, I think, at the end of the season. And good for them for the improvements that they have made. Hightower won its game over Austin 43 to 14, and they remain undefeated for district and the entire regular season. Okay, so for right now, let's stick with Class 6A. In District 26A, straight Jesuit leads Taylor, A-Leaf Taylor tonight. 23 to 19, that game is in the third quarter. And that's really all that is relevant in the district that includes Fulcher. Now let's move on to the district that includes teams that Fort Bend ISD will play in the first round. Pearland is getting spanked. 27 to 7. Pearland getting spanked by Shadow Creek in that game has moved to the fourth quarter. Pearland, the team that Fulcher beat in week one, that was their first ever win in their first ever game in Class 6A competition. All right, and now we go to District 21 6A, which includes the Fort Bend ISD schools. And Patrick, I know you're going to cringe when you hear this. Oh. Ridge Point taking on Clements. <coughs> oh, okay. 63 to nothing at the half. Mm. I'm I'm glad we didn't pick that game. <laughs> That's why we're here. Well, it's I had a feeling that was going to go not, south. Yeah. Really fast. All right. Elkins is leading Dulles 31 to nothing. That game is in the third period and Elkins is looking like they're in a pretty good position to get into the playoffs. They'll probably go down to the final week, and it might be either them or Austin. One or the other will get into the playoffs. Now, the game really, I have to confess, Patrick, Trailer Stadium, where we are, we are usually the high school, the center of the high school football universe, (laughs) but not tonight. No. That is the game between North Shore and Atascacita. It's gone to halftime, and Atascacita leads it. 23 to 20. I wish I could be in two places at one time. It would be great to watch that one and broadcast this one as well. Okay, now we'll go into the smaller classifications. Let's think about Class 5A, Division 2. Randall beat Terry here last night, 58 to nothing. So Randall continues, ranked six in the state in their classification and undefeated. Now, Port Natchez Groves is the team that is ranked number one in Class 5A Division II. But, Patrick, no, Nederland is leading oh. Port Natchez Groves 17-7 to in the third quarter. Whoa. That is quite a surprise, and if that score holds, then you will see Randall 
probably move up in the rankings. What is Nederland's record? Are well, Nederland is, uh, they must I'll be, be honest with you, I don't know what it is. They usually are, are very competitive. Yes, yes, they are. The Nederland Bulldogs, a very proud program. That's where Bum Phillips started long, long time ago. And the Nederland Bulldogs live up to their name very often. Yes. All right, we got another upset in the making. Barbers Hill is leading Galveston Ball, undefeated Galveston Ball. It is 17 to 16 at halftime of that ball game. And let's see. How about this? In Class 5A Division I, I don't have any dogs in the fight in Fort Bend County. There are no Class 5A Division I teams in Fort Bend County other than the Kempner Cougars, and this is not their year. They lost last night 59-6 to Angleton. But Alito, Patrick, is down 28-21. The Alito Bearcats, they almost never lose. I long for them to lose, and they are down 28-21 to Richland. That game is in the third quarter. And my favorite non-Houston area team in the state, long, uh, well, there are two teams. One of them is Smithson Valley. Yes, and then, like, I mean, guess it's, it's got to be uh, Long, Longview, uh, 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 Pine Tree. I'm so proud of Pine you. Tree. Yes, <laughs> Longview, Pine Tree. Only one loss on the season, and they lead Tyler Chapel, Chapel Hill at halftime. Longview, Pine Tree, 13. Tyler Chapel Hill, 7 at the half. And I think I've told you pretty much everything you need to know. Looking at my sheet here. Oh, yeah, uh, I already, let's see. One other score I want to report. Waltrip leads Austin. Houston, Stephen F. Austin, 49, or they beat them last night, actually. 49 to nothing. And I'm proud of my good friend Chris O'Neill, the head coach of the Waltrip Rams in his first year after coaching Tuloso Midway down in the Corpus Christi area and doing very well with them. I'm just so proud of Chris. He's really... Uh, had a great year. Only one loss for the Waltrip Rams. By the way, Patrick, did you notice that the officials and Coach Caduti and also Coach Casey Vote of George Ranch had a little conference at the 50-yard line? And I think Tony Barcelona, the referee, just was saying, okay, here's the way it's going to be in the second half. Yeah. They want it nice and clean. Yep. Don't get a bunch of penalties. Don't get your players disqualified for the first half next week. Let's just play football. Yeah, let's not uh, let's not do something that costs your team uh, some goofy things here for the next week. Let's see. Will Fulcher kick an onside kick? I doubt up, it. Up I have fifty-two it. to seven. Yeah, fifty-two to seven. I Protocol. Mean, just uh, I think the right thing to do would be kick it normally. Last night we had a similar game, and they did not start running the clock until after the third quarter. So I don't know if there's some sort of rule or how they do that. Or do they agree as coaches or what, what the rule is? Yeah, I'm sure they both have to agree. All right, Quinones is going to kick off. They got some great athletes on the Fulcher kick coverage team. Oh, Look yeah. at these guys. Yeah. Caleb Augustus. Creighton Dickey, Rafe Taruta, long kickoff, and it bounces inside the five, does not go to the end zone. It is Desmond Drinker trying to get out of there and returns it to the 16, rolled over, might have gotten to the 17, and a flag comes in late on the kickoff return that end, that begins this quarter, and Fulcher guys are pointing like they recovered a fumble or something. You know what happened on that? I think I saw. Now we have oh, my somebody goodness. must have said something coming out of that pile because Tony Barcelona <laughs> threw a flag. I think one of the uh, George Ranch players pulled the guy off the pile, and I think they call that a penalty. I'm not. They, they don't like you to do that. And then after the scuffle, as you Tony Barcelona threw a flag, and it is as, as if somebody might have said something on the Fulcher side. I love a good percussion section, but yes. I hope they'll kind of stop playing so we can hear Mr. Barcelona. Here he comes. Ooh. 
Did he? I think you heard it better than me. I what did he, he say? I said uh, there was a they were pulled. It was what I thought. A George Ranch player pulled a guy off the pile and kind of threw him off the pile. And then uh, somebody, I believe he said number 33. Inappropriate language to the referee is what I heard. Inappropriate language to the referee, which, again, you could tell that Tony Barcelona had heard something because there was no pushing and shoving. Guys were running back to the their sidelines, and he heard something, and he, he put that penalty flag high in the air. He does not want to hear that kind of stuff. Whatever, All right. <laughs> whatever it was. Salty language. Yes. Blue language. First and 10 from the 17 for George Ranch. Pistol formation. Lineberger hands it off and gets away. And Fulcher recovers. Hayden Drinkard and Lineberger just didn't make the connection. And it looks like, uh, I think, Eamon Eddie Alley, his second fumble recovery of the night, grabs it for Fulcher, and they have it on the 11. Boy, just not, obviously not what you wanted. The question is, will... Uh, will Pat Patrick Broadway get a carry? He's in the game. You know, I think I see number nine. Is it I, nine or eight? I can't tell. It's kind of kind of wrinkled. He needs to iron his jersey. Yeah, I think it's number eight, but that could, okay, I'm gonna I could be wrong. You know? I think you're right. I think it's Broadway. Single setback behind Ryland Forks. First and ten from the eleven yard line. And off to Broadway, finding his way through the traffic, knocks his own teammate down and keeps going and into the end zone. Touchdown, Broadway, on the first offensive snap of the third quarter for the Chargers, who were already up 52 to seven. Now it's 58 to seven. So within 21 seconds, they've got points. They kicked off, and they within 21 seconds they've scored. That's that's classic Fulcher. They're going to kick it, Roger. Hey, how about this? How about this? I guess when you're up by 51, you kick it. <laughs> Alejandro Quinones out of the hold of Ace Uthier. Kick is up. Kick is good. Uh, almost all the way across the track. 59 to 7. 11.39 to go in the third. This is VibeFortBend.com. It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugar Land area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive, four's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball, get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. All right, Patrick, since it's 59 to 7, I'm going to ask you a question in a, a minute or so, and it will be an unusual offbeat question. Quinones kicks it off. It is median depth. It comes down to the 17 yard line, returned by Baylor Smith. Moves toward the middle, cuts up the left hash marks, and gets a pretty decent return out to the 32, a 14 yard return. All right, so because we had a player use inappropriate language and get flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct, I'm gonna ask you, what golfer, professional golfer who is active today, would you least expect to utter an obscene or otherwise inappropriate word with a hot mic? I don't really know. I'm sorry, I talked over no, yeah, Mr. Barcelona. It it's a, a blindside block. Yeah. My bad. No, Go ahead. Uh, I don't know the golfers very well. Um, 
Well, I don't watch it nearly as much as I did during the Tiger Woods era. I'll nice. admit that. Uh, just I, I can't even pull a name out right now. I, uh, I can't even pull a name out. I well, I'm thinking of Scotty Scheffler. All right. He was uh, had a hot mic and uh, said some things he shouldn't have no, said. No, no, I'm saying oh, he that, never would. I'm that, saying that, oh, okay. the question is, who do you think would be the oh, okay. least likely? Not that it happened. It's no, just, it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, okay. He did get arrested once, but there was a terrible misunderstanding. All right, a run on the first play of this series. Hayden Drinkard goes to the right, just kind of sliding down the line of scrimmage, looking for a yard. Well, he didn't find a yard, but he did find two feet. And it'll be third. Is it third down? I thought it was second. I think it's second down and a long nine. The uh, <coughs> the marker did move, and now they have a two there, so we see okay. that. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> back to Three Dog Night. Okay, Three Dog Night. By the way, Patrick brought this up right before halftime. Right, right. Hold that thought. Yes. Pistol formation, Lineberger, claps his hands together, stretch play coming to the near side. And this will get some yardage. It's Hayden Drinkard again. He carries the ball a lot for George Ranch. And he gains, I think, three there. So it'll be third down and six coming up. And Carmelo it was Ferns on the tackle for uh, along Fulcher. With, along with Cunningham. Uh, Cunningham. Uh, Carmelo Cunningham was in there as well. Uh, three Dog Night. I heard the song, Old Fashioned Love Song. Oh, yeah. Now that's a good song. Now let's go to the next play here, third and seven. But I have not yet named my favorite Three Dog Night song. Oh. All right. Third down and six, George Ranch trailing 59 to seven. And there is a roll to the right. And Lineberger throws short. Got a man, got a first down. Delivered it to Nick Perez. And he knew where the stick was, and he ran out of bounds at the 28-yard line. That moves the sticks first and 10. That'll be a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. So what is your favorite song? Black and White. Uh, that's, that's a good one. Oh, it's just, it's such a wonderful yep. advance in American history and public education. We're talking about, here we go. Here is the run to the right. There goes Drinkard. Gets around Caleb Augustus, heads for the sideline and goes out after a pickup of two, second and eight. Well, he was. So for those who, who are not familiar, I won't sing it. Thank you. The ink is black, the page is white. Yep. Yeah, together, so let's see. They learn to read and write. They, they, together they learn to read and write. Well, I'm, I'm kind of getting them yeah, out of order. Uh, we got the lines, but we're not quite. But it's yeah. about desegregation. Yeah, it was a good song, and it was in the 70s, for crying out loud. Yes, and so joyful. It's it just was. a joyful song. It's even more joyful to me than Jeremiah was a bullfrog, <laughs> Joy to the World. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that Three Dog Night song. It makes me smile every time I hear it. Lineberger throws in the flat, off his receiver's hands, and it falls incomplete. You know why it was off his hands? But I don't know. Because number two, uh, Brian... Is it Hooven? Hooven. Hooven. Rhymes with nothing that Grooven. I know of. Go ahead. Hooven. Hooven. Yeah, that's uh, right. He was bearing down. <laughs> I think he heard his foot, footsteps coming in there, and he turned his head at the last minute. And he heard the hoof beats yes. of Hooven. That's exactly Of the Chargers. Right. Third down and eight. Pistol formation again. Lineberger hands it off to Drinkard, who drops it and has to just drop on it. Recovers the fumble at his own 24. That's a loss of uh, several rats. <laughs> About uh, uh, the, okay. let's, let's just say six. Six. Yeah, <laughs> close enough. Well, anyway, uh, so uh, three dog night. Um, did, did, what? Where does that name come from? Is there such a thing? Oh yes. Is there such a thing as a three dog night? Yes. Like, what does that mean? I'm so glad you asked that I, question. I, I want somebody to tell me. But first. Let's describe the punt. Thank you. High snap. And the punt is away, and Mike Brown fields it at his 43, heads to the left, outside the numbers, across the 40, and goes to the safe haven of the sideline near the 35, and we get a little tussle, but no flag yep. after the play was over. They, they, I they got an answer for they you, Patrick. Okay. Three dog night yeah. is it's a term that is used by mushers in Alaska. Okay, what is a musher? Well, someone who delivers things on a big 
packed up sled with Huskies or some other dog bred to pull a sled in the okay, snow. So they need three dogs this Yeah, night. and when it's time to bed down for the night and camp, if it's really cold, you get three that's dogs. when you get three dogs okay. in your tent snuggling to, up to you. To, uh, to warm you up. So it's when it's really cold, that's when it's a three-dog night. That's what it is, huh? That's what it is. I'll be done. From the 35-yard line, Ryland Fork still in there. Hands off to Broadway. Tough yardage going over the left side. Five-yard gain. Did it come out at the end? It no. Did. Well, it, it came out. But it did come out, but the official says that Broadway was down. Yeah, he looked- on the tackle for uh, these Longhorns is number 45, and there ain't no 45 on the roster. Ooh. I thought maybe, Patrick, we could get through a week without <laughs> a roster gonna... that was missing a jersey. It happens. It name. happens every week, doesn't it? It's it just seems amazing. to, and it never did when we were playing. Well, how do seriously, you, how do you know? I know it didn't happen. <laughs> Everybody just had a jersey number, and it was on the roster. <laughs> It was in the program you that you playing. bought on the way in. You were playing. And My you were... parents showed me the program. <laughs> Run into the right. Demarius Fro inside the sideline, still going. Inside the 10, cuts back. It's a touchdown. Demarius Fro on kind of an innocent-looking sweep to the right. Wait a minute. Did he go out of bounds? Oh, now they got Now we got pushing and shoving and flags. Oh, boy. There's multiple flags here. And some of the coaches are running onto the field here from the George Ranch side of the field. Get these guys out of there. And now, I didn't see the the scuffle. I was looking down the sidelines to see if. Okay, there's an injured George Ranch player near the pylon, and I think Fro ran into him inside the five and pushed him down, and maybe he landed awkwardly, and he's injured his left leg. I don't think that's where the penalty was, though. Do you think, Roger? Well, it might, it might have resulted maybe maybe fro came back after scoring and, and he was something. saying something like i put a move on you yeah yeah and, and which now might have, might have been the catalyst to it all here's uh, tony barcelona is he is he going to say something or is he going to come talk to the <laughs> fulcher he's checking on the kid first and he's also talking to head coach uh uh casey vote aiden creech was the injured player and he's making his way to the sideline, limping. But he's he's having to walk slowly. But he's under his own power. That's yes. a good thing. Now, Tony Barcelona is talking to. We may have an ejection, side. Patrick. Let's see. After the touchdown, there's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Everybody in the stadium has a UNS, which means number 33, number 11. Okay, I guess a UNS is unsportsmanlike conduct. So he, he gave it to every player on the field. And every coach. So everybody has one. Everybody has one. And so what he's saying is that's enough of this. And if you do one more, you're out of here, even if you haven't really had one. I, I kind of like that. Let's, yeah. just, let's just end the shenanigans now. And he, he, he was emphatic, though, wasn't he? he is he going to say something else here? Let's see. No, I don't think so. But he, uh, I don't mind that at all. I think that's actually a good thing to do. And there's one other thing I'm confused about, Patrick. He said 11 and 33 when he mentioned full shirt. So I'm thinking, is are both Creighton Dickey yes. and also Mike Brown yes. both tossed? They are tossed. And okay. there, was, there was a number for... Number four, Avery number, Luna. Yeah, and then I don't know if he said anybody else for George Ranch, but he did say the number four. So at least three of the players, as we just mentioned, are ejected. And everybody else is under the... Whatever that is. What is that called? Unsportsmanlike conduct. He called it a UNS. Everybody's got one everybody and by the way alejandro quinones kicked it perfectly right above the blue bell (laughs) in the west end of trailer stadium it's now 66 to 7 
the route is i said it was i said the route is on in the first half well the route is really on now and that blue bell it's not a bucket of ice cream that's right i wish i had a really funny line to follow that with but we'll take this break 66 to 7 750 to go in the third my goodness It's fall, y'all. Head over to First Tire and Automotive for a free tire pressure and tread depth check. There's a store right around the corner from you in the Sugarland area. First Tire and Automotive prioritizes their customers and employees above all else. Their core values, family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. Wherever your journey leads, reliable auto care is essential. A full synthetic oil change to $60. Oh, my. And more savings on the website. Book your appointment today at firsttireandauto.com. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive Ford's convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Ready for the kickoff from Alejandro Quinones, 66-7. Fulcher leading George Ranch. And the kick is a little more of a line drive, angled toward the left, and it goes out of bounds before it reaches the pylon. So let's see, Patrick, uh, there was something I was going to Well, I was going to say, you. Oh, go ahead. before that, I sure hope they don't onside kick this one. <laughs> I think that would have been a really bad thing if they would have done it there, 66 to 7. And I also think, I don't know what the rules are again, but I think now is the time to run the clock. <laughs> Just start it right now. And Roger, what were you going to, did you have something? Well, I was going to say that there's really no danger, I don't think, in Fulcher losing its next game. Okay. So, so you, you lose... Uh, Mike Brown and Creighton Dickey for the next game. First half, right? Yeah, that, that exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, I, mean, I, still, I should have said that part. But it's yeah. still significant. Yeah. Now you want to have those guys together because you're putting together these new looks in the single wing and Correct. giving future opponents something that they have to look at and prepare for. Um, but you got to realize don't even get any unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in the playoffs because you never know if losing one of your starters or one of your important players yeah. could result in a playoff loss. Well, it comes down to one play often in these playoffs. Yeah, you have nothing. You have, you, you, there's no tomorrow, put it that way. Can't afford it. Lineberger hands it off and they're using, uh, using a new running back here at Two-yard pickup over the right side as they gave it to Brandon Everett. Did you see a flag come in at I the end? I thought I saw something fly up there, but I, didn't, I don't think it was a flag. Okay. But mercifully, no flag on that play. Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, you just you can ill afford to uh, lose players in the playoffs. It, that kind of thing could be the difference between winning, winning and losing, obviously. And you know another thing? What's the other thing? You're going to go up against some some playoff tested absolutely teams that have a culture of yep. playing in high stakes postseason games absolutely. and you're not going to intimidate them by saying some filthy word right i mean come on exactly. if it's if it jeopardizes your chance of staying in the game and it doesn't affect the other team just don't say it second down to nine lineberger rolling to the left heavy pressure throws ball tipped caught by george ranch how about that <laughs> That was a lucky it was play. A, it was a lucky play because, believe Aguedo, uh, Fulcher got a hand on it, but he tipped it right to number 19, Nick Perez, who did a perfect toe tap and was inbounds at the 30, uh, the 41. What was that name last night? Do you remember that name last night that you had? Uh, uh, yeah, I do <laughs> remember saying a name, oh, and, it, and I'm not exaggerating fans. We, I think it had 10 syllables in it. <laughs> well, at least... And it was a hyphenated last name, and the first name was, was it Good Luck? 
Yeah, something good, like that. Good luck something, yeah. Kid's oh. name was Good Luck. And there is a big run. Number 35, Ever, uh, Brandon Everett. You know, and this is no slam on Hayden Drinkard. But holes are kind of opening up. Now, granted, Fulcher has some second teamers in there. Yes. But yes. all of a sudden, Brandon Everett on two plays, I believe, has exceeded all the yardage that Hayden Drinkard got for the whole game. Hayden Drinkard had a couple of nice plays there at the end of the first half. And um, as you said, uh, Everett, Brandon Everett is uh, playing at, at the right time of the game here. Five and a half to play here in the third quarter. They're taking a long time to, <laughs> to get the play. And the play clock still has 15 seconds. Yeah, I think George Ranch would just as soon take as much time off the clock in between the, the whistle that ends a play and the snap that begins the next one. I agree with that. Just keep it shortened. But we still have five minutes to go in the third quarter. And there's Brandon Everett in that time. They clamped down on him. Oh, boy. Well, that was an ouchie. Let's see. Well, that was 34. Christian. Right? Go ahead, Roger. Oh, well, I got 34, Mohamed Jallo. And, and number and 67. 67. Christian. Christian. Oh, boy. Let me look at it. Roger's taking time on this. It's like looking at a four-foot putt. <laughs> on you, Roa. <laughs> on Euroa. That would be more than a four foot putt there for me. That'd be like a. A double breaker? <laughs> a double breaker, 45 footer. All right, I apologize to Christian on Euroa. Next time, I'll be ready. They let the play clock get down to four here before the snap. It was a two yard loss, and Lineberger throws a little stop route. Quick comeback route and about a gain of seven yards. Nice extra effort as Desmond Drinkard wriggled away from the first would-be tackler. And with less than four minutes to go in this third quarter, he advances to the 34-yard line. It'll be third and four coming up for the George Ranch Longhorns. Uh, Patrick, were you kind of aware of uh, state championships when... George Ranch won the state yes. title in 2015. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, somewhat paying attention. I saw the their team photo in, in the uh, Papa John store and all that kind of stuff. They a lot of success. And it was awesome in NRG Stadium in 2015. Katie won a state title. North Shore won a state title. And George Ranch running to the right is Everett. And he's got quick feet. And runs through some tacklers and gets inside the 25 near the 23. First down. That'll be a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. 11-yard gain for Brandon Everett. So and uh, they played it in Houston, Patrick. And three of the four champions crowned in the two biggest classifications were greater Houston teams. Okay, so here's the question. Um, how does it work? Is it sort of a rotation kind no, of thing? No, it's or? always at AT&T. Why was it in Houston that time? Because the NFL told Jerry Jones, you can't be playing high school games on a Saturday night and turn around and have a Sunday game in AT&T. Oh well, he was able to persuade them, we can do it, and now it's it's been at AT&T ever since. Uh. There's a run to the right. Number 34, who's not on the roster. Well, I mean, and he drop, I just, gets dropped for a loss of one. I feel like, I, you know, being from Houston or the Houston area, I feel like we're being a bit slighted here. Yes, I, I we feel are. Like, I, don't, I feel like it should be a rotation or something because certainly San Antonio has a facility with uh, the, the Alamo Dome. And, of course, yes. they've got a great, you know, it's a great place to go if you're, yes. you're going to be, you know, visiting. Houston, you know, we got a great facility. Uh, Dallas, obviously a great facility. But what, what, what do you do in Dallas that you can't do in Houston, you know, in terms of, you know, if you're visiting or whatever? Yeah, it's, it's there's like, no question. It's, you you it's, are preaching to the choir, okay. my friend. All right. I and, mean, it should be AT&T. Or even Austin. Alamo Dome. Well, they don't have a, a, yeah. a roof. Well, and, you know, if the weather is terrible, ah, it just ruins everything. Ah, that's, that's not good. Yes, it is. No, it's not good. Up the middle, 34 again. His name's not on the roster. <laughs> Just keep calling. Oh, wait 34. a minute. Uh, 
Is that the same guy? Or was it 35 that time? Was it our man? Uh, actually, that was 35. That, that was, Everett. was uh, Brandon Everett. Yeah. Sorry. But, I mean, you know, uh, hey. But was, a lot of people no. will insist on that. We insist on that what? That it be okay, well, in it, climate control okay, comfort. If it, if it has to be, then it should be the rotation. Dallas, right. Houston, San Antonio. Dallas, exactly. Because all of them have all three great. I mean, okay, okay. So they've got the big screen. Okay, big deal. It's, you know, this, you're telling me the screen in NRG is not big enough? I mean, you, you could still see it. I mean, geez. I mean, it's just silly. Silly nonsense, and I don't like it. And I suppose uh, Jerry has a lot of money into it or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yes, he does, uh, Patrick. <laughs> Up the middle, Brandon Everett. I don't think he made any yardage on third and nine, and now it'll be fourth and nine. I think it's the last play of the third quarter. And it is going to be the last play of the third quarter. We'll step aside and be back. It is a one-sided game, to say the least. 66-7, to Fulcher leading George Ranch, and we shall return. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. Um, my daughter invited her entire class to her birthday party. Can my Wi-Fi handle it? Oh, well, at Xfinity, our latest gateways have tri-band Wi-Fi technology, letting you connect hundreds of devices at once. No way. So if all the kids are watching stuff on their phones while well, their parents are sharing videos online... Yep, go ahead and watch videos. They can all do their thing and party their way. No problem. Oh, we are going to need a bigger cake. Now through October 21st, get Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for two years with unlimited data when you add unlimited mobile. Plus, get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 monthly value included at no extra cost. Visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Xfinity, bring on the good stuff. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. After promo, regular internet rates apply. Currently $96 a month. Actual speeds vary. All right, Patrick. So I, I realize we're I, probably just talking to ourselves <laughs> at this point. Well, somebody might. Uh, there might be somebody listening. Yeah, maybe a little okay. delayed action maybe. Or Well, I, I just want to let them know how difficult it is to make decisions about which playoff football games to broadcast. We basically have the capability to do one game at a time. That makes sense. And, um, <laughs> you know, but there, you know, there's some outfits that they can do several games simultaneously, but we're, we do one. And, and hopefully we do it well. So, I mean, you got Fulcher and Randall and Ridgepoint and Hightower Four teams from Fort Bend County that are all undefeated. Look like they're going places. Lineberger throws a rainbow to the end zone, but it was a little too much to the inside for his man to come back in and get it. He was trying to deliver to Desmond Drinker. That was fourth down. By the way, the, and the clock, ball goes over. The clock is running, Rogers, so that's a good thing. Yes, ever it ever is. since uh, uh, referee Tony Barcelona made that announcement, really things have settled down really a whole lot it's the the, to the whole tone of this end of the game here is just calm down which is good don't want to get anybody hurt out here nobody ineligible for the next game i wanted to ask you a question we would be, we've been talking about three dog night what would be a band that you would put in the same category in terms of popularity to three dog night okay have an idea here's a give it is caden bean I love the way that little fella runs. Yep, he's got a lot of energy, tenacity. And Cade Marino grabbed him and threw him back, but before he did, he picked up six to the 28 so on you, that first so you down play. you already have one in mind? I mean, you, well, you didn't let have me to ask you this. Long. You asked me about a group, and you wanted me to find a group to compare. May I use a, a single individual, no, an no. artist? It's got to be a group. Well, well, give me an artist, but I, I would prefer a group. Okay, but an artist would be fine. Uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, expand the horizon a little bit. After second down and four, Ryland Fork still playing quarterback. Give to Bean, hit near the line of scrimmage. Keeps fighting, pushing forward. He got two yards. That's it. Down at the thirty. They never actually got him down. No. Okay. I think one of the most underappreciated hit-making singers was Johnny Rivers. I really like Johnny Rivers and name three of his songs. All right, uh, 
Rockin' Pneumonia. Poor side of town. Memphis, Tennessee. All right, I would not put him in that category. I, I would not put him in the three dog night category. Okay. In terms of popularity. I that's just me. I'm just here's a third and two. Caden Bean running left. He needed two, he got one. Nice tackle. Kagan Mahone. Yeah, he was wrapping him up. He just kind of bulldogged him like a calf during the <laughs> calf scramble at NRG in yeah. February. He gave him a bear hug first and then rode him down. So what do you have a band? You have a, a band. band. Give me a, a minute or two yeah. to think about that. Yeah. Johnny Rivers. Huh. I would put uh, Bill Withers ahead of Johnny Rivers. Well, I you love who, his voice. You know who Bill Withers is. Oh, absolutely. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Fourth down and one, and they're going for it from their own 31. Caden Bean, first down over the left side. Didn't get too much, but he got enough. But his and most popular song would have been Bill Withers. Um, let me think. Uh, uh, lean on use me, me up. No, lean on okay. me. Okay. Well, Lean On Me, yes, and Use song. Me Up was a great yeah, song, too. Boy, they, he had some good songs. I'd, I'd put him ahead of Johnny Rivers, but uh, well, but that's a, that's a name that I hadn't thought about, Johnny Rivers, much. I hadn't thought about him. Forks turns around and gives it off to not Bean. This is a different guy. This is David Godley, every, Davion's little bro. Every single one of these runners for... Uh, Fulcher. They run hard. Yeah, I mean, they, they run just, like their next meal depends on it. And they, I, I guess you would have to in the competition so so heavy they they want to prove something, you know, and uh, I think that's good. Six yard run by Godley. We'll see whenever people ask me questions about musical groups or movies or this or that or TV shows, if I just have to think about it within two minutes or less I know I'm overlooking something. Oh, of course. It's, it's like naming best players, yeah. you know. Well, like, let's, for instance, here's, well, hold a, here's on. the pitch. There goes Godley running to the right side, but he didn't get anything. They, Good play over he there. He slid out of bounds, and that was 17. On the edge of 17, it was Jake Cunningham. Nice tackle. And uh, I think when he's got his buds who come over to the house and they call his mother Mrs. C. Mrs. C. Like yes. uh, Fonzie. Fon Ar Arthur, Arthur Fonzarelli, <laughs> as she would have called him. What about, okay, after this play, Roger. Forks on third down and four. Hands it off. There goes Godley. Lots of daylight. Gets oh. out to the 50. That was Ran it for 10. Are you sure? 21. Yeah. Okay, if it's 21, you're right. Caden Bean. Caden Bean. Would this band be the sort of equivalent in popularity success uh, as the three dog night uh, Crosby stills and Nash or where do they well, you think they're above above them I I don't think they're above three dog night personally oh no I don't think so either I think there's some bands that are kind of uh, a certain crowd will just tell you how great they are right from the 50-yard line, another give to Bean over the left side. Breaks one tackle near the line of scrimmage. Picks up six, and Ellison Collins drops him like a bad habit he had a after bear, a gain of six. Gave a bear hug and dropped him to the ground. Under six to play. Are you saying that Crosby, Stills, and Nash was kind of that type of band where yeah. a certain crowd would have liked them? Yeah. They had a different sound. They, they definitely had a different sound, but... I've heard that when you went to see them live, you realized why it took them so many thousands of hours in the studio to get the sound right, because when it was live, the harmonies didn't sound all that great like they did on the record. That's interesting. There goes Godley through heavy traffic on second down and four, right down the middle, and the tackle from Mohammed Abudawood. Well done. Abudawood. Well done. Abuda Wood. Uh, That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to think of another band that would be. And, and you know something else? Not that Three Dog Night ever uh, didn't ever try to kind of make a point about war at the time of the Vietnam War, 
There goes Godley. They grab his jersey and limit him to a gain of one. So not that Three Dog Night never sang about the war. I think they might have had a couple of war protest songs. But Crosby, Stills, and Nash kind of had some songs where they were overtly talking, you know, trying to make some kind of political statement. And certain crowds, you know, that included critics would right. really elevate them and just say, just you know, just fawn over them. What about a guy, na- a guy named uh, who was also a part of that group for a time, Neil Young? Yeah, they, they, you know, the certain groups are just in love with Neil Young. I think he's okay, but I don't think he's as great as they do. Well, I think he's. I like him. He's got a, a, a certain style. I don't. I'm not in love with all of his music because some of some of them, some of those songs are just they sound kind of the same or whatever, but. Ohio is a good song. Old Man. Uh, what was that song about? Uh, Heart of Gold. Heart of Gold was a good song. He had, he had some good songs. Of course, did you know that he was part of Buffalo Springfield? Yeah, I did. That? Okay, so that was a seven-yard run on that previous play by Bean. And Fumble picked up by the quarterback, Ace Uthie, and he runs with it outside the numbers, inside the 15. Boy. And somewhere along the line, I didn't realize when they pulled uh, Ryland Forks and replaced him with Ace Uthie. Yeah, he dropped the ball and then picked it up and got a good gain on that. And they've kept running the clock, so, you know, we're less than three and a half minutes away from being done here. I know. We're going to have to start talking about our post-game strategy here you and me and rosie vega inside the mothership the and mothership. and is there anybody out there <laughs> is anybody out there yeah. that's a deaf leopard song yeah that's does a good song anybody there does anybody care here goes uthie following blockers but uh the hole suddenly filled and he gets thrown down after a gain of one and crawling out from the bottom of that little scrum is Frank Rodriguez. We'll have less than two and a half minutes to go in this one-sided football game as Fulcher will improve to 9-0. and They'll have two games left, and then they'll be off on week 11 to get ready for, for their first playoff game. There goes Uthie, running left, gets inside the 10, uh, inside the 5, rather, to the 4. And would they take a knee here? They have 66 points. Well, they're, it's actually, did they give them a first down on that? If it's a first down, you should take a knee. Uh, but it's third down. I would maybe quarterback sneak it, get a, get a first down, and then, knee, and then knee it the rest of the way. Now, Uthie is letting the play clock go down. He's standing with hands on hips. All of his teammates are ready to plow right now. But the play, uh, play clock is at 19, and the game clock is now ticked down to 139. There they go, running it to the left. Uthie, who's not a real big dude, gets thrown back. And a last what? Thrown back like an uh, old man sending soup back in a deli. <laughs> that was Jacob Thompson. Yeah, he's run the ball about four times in a row. They just quarterback running it. And uh, are they going to just let the clock run? I would hope they would just knee this. No need. For all two of you who are still out there listening, <laughs> join us tomorrow at 11 a.m. Victory formation, by the way. Uthier takes a knee. Thank you. There will be one more snap, and he'll take a knee again. And let's see. 11 a.m. tomorrow, Marshall taking on Iowa Colony. This is a big game. You don't want to make your first-round playoff matchup any more unfavorable than it needs to be. So the Marshall Buffs taking on Iowa Colony from Hall Stadium at 11 a.m. tomorrow, 10.45 a.m. with the countdown to kickoff show. And here's the final snap of the game. Uthier takes the knee. And the teams will line up and walk across the field at the 50-yard line. So our final score, it, it's not final, Patrick, yet. It's got 20 more seconds. It's got a tick, tick, tick. 66-7 to seven will be the final score. So for Patrick Kinnick, Rosie Bega inside the mothership at Vibe World Headquarters, Suna, Bert, uh, Suna Bertrand, no, they didn't get married because Merle's already married. Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Bob McKay, and everyone who's a part of VibeFortMen.com. 
Thank you for being with us. As always, we bring you three football games every week during the season, plus playoffs, and we got Tuesday night volleyball. All you Fulcher fan out there. <laughs> the uh, Fulcher girls taking on Foster Tuesday night at 5.30. Roger Smith saying goodbye and God bless from Trailer Stadium. 66-7 is the final, and the Fulcher band will play me off the stage. Patrick is already going to cut down banners. Good night, everybody.